Yo! Hey! What's good? Code PODCONY135 for $135 off. Hi, everybody. Howdy! Growing the beard out? No, I just forgot to shave it. This is like five days for me. I think I shaved, uh... Let me think. I shaved... The day of Ludwig's thing. The first day, so Friday. Um, this is... Oh my god. This is actually from Friday to now. <laughs> this is... This is... Almost a week. I feel like that's such a long time. People grow such a better beard than me. Oh, hold on. I gotta tweet something out. I gotta tweet out the sponsor thing. Okay, this stream is sponsored by Green Chef. Hi, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Also, when a sub happens, this is gonna happen. It's gonna pop. It used to make a sound. I had to turn that off. <laughs> Otherwise, it... Dude, this actually popped. Oh, never mind. There it is. It's not supposed to do that. <laughs> I thought I turned that off. Uh, okay. I gotta, I gotta figure it out. Because it's not supposed to be doing that. Do I still have it open somewhere? <laughs> Silent Hill sound? I know. It's scary. Dude, it, it did pop for every follower. And I'm like, I don't like that. I've never had follower alerts. I gotta turn this off. This is horrifying. Okay, hold on. Stop! How do I make it stop? <laughs> I, I turned the sound down. It didn't work. Stop. Oh, it's for resubs. Oh my god, hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for new subs it was fine. For resub, okay, we're good. We're done. I think I think uh I think donations might still pop it, but I don't know. I don't feel like going through all those. Hi guys. Welcome to the stream. Tonight is sponsored by Green Chef. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later, and we're going to unbox something that they sent to me. Oh, boy. But they're sponsoring tonight and then a stream next week. So thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring today's stream. It's a meal delivery service. Uh, it's it's done by the same people that do HelloFresh, but there's a focus on uh, preferences for, like, you know, paleo, keto, vegetarian, Mediterranean, gluten-free, that kind of stuff. So... We'll go over that later. That's that's a problem for later, Coney. Also, if you use this code, PogCony135, you can get $135 off your first five boxes. And uh, I make some money if you do it. But I make money even if you don't do it. So, you know, do what you want to do. <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just trying to help you, you know? How do you use a redemption code? Oh, the the uh, it's free sub code? You have to redeem the code that you get. Hit exclamation point claim in the chat. You're going to get a code. You want to take that down and save it until later in the stream when I tell you when to pop it. Just give it some time. Don't worry. Hi, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Sorry I was a little late. I had to put baby to bed. So, uh, I don't know if you guys saw... Uh, I tweeted this out. Alpharad and I have recorded the podcast today. Okay. Um. We recorded the podcast together. By the way. Hundo Watch 2 is officially in effect. <laughs> Less than 1K. We're close. Hundo Watch 2. Um. He 
Oh, by the way, I'm doing this Mario Party Summit. Finally, another Mario Party Summit. I keep telling him that I'm going to be in it, and I keep not making it because I have something to do. But there's a Mario Party Summit this Friday. Except I actually don't think I can make this either. I haven't told him yet. <laughs> my my, my, my cousin-in-law, my wife's cousin, is getting married this weekend, and the dinner is Friday. <laughs> and it was at 7. So what I was going to do, so this starts at 4. I was going to play the first two rounds, and then the third round I was going to throw on purpose and just be like, hey, who wants my stars? Most gifted gets my stars and then just play, you know. But now it's at 5.30, the wedding. So I don't think I can make it because I can't even make the first round. No, because the first round's at 4, and the wedding dinner is at 5.30. So uh, I don't know. I feel really bad. This is the third summit because he always asks me. He's like, hey, do you want to be a part of this? And I'm like, hell yeah, I would love that. And then every time I have to say I can't make it. It's so sad. It's tough. Um, but this happened today, so we recorded the podcast today, and, uh, I explained to, to Alpharad how I was down, uh, you know, $1,500. Um, I said that what happened was I went down 500 playing craps with my boss, <laughs> and then I went down an extra five because I put it on red, and then I went down 500 more for uh for blackjack just playing the game right uh he said you never have to go down in roulette and i was like what do you mean and i think that he explained this to me before but i forgot the play is you go to roulette and you spend five hundred dollars on red Okay? Which is 50-50 odds, basically. All right? 500 on red. Or black. Or black. Okay? If you win, you make $500 and you leave. Coney, will you collab with Northern Lion? Absolutely. When would we do that? <laughs> if he hits me up, sure. I don't even know what that would look like. <laughs> no, undo? No. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. I love the Northern Light. Uh, no, you, 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 you put 500 on red. And then if you win, you leave. And you made $500 that day. If you lose, you put $1,000 on red. And then you make your 500 back. And then the other 500. And then you leave. If you lose again... You're down, what, 1500 Then you go for 1500 Or no, you would go 2000 You see what I'm saying? You just keep going. And as long as you have a big enough nest egg, as long as you have, like, a certain amount of money in the bank, you could do this every day in your, of your life. What if you always lose? Well, then God hates you, and God doesn't want you to succeed. Think of it this way, okay? If you have $100,000, okay? You get to roll like eight times. Nobody will land on a coin flip. You're not going to land on tails eight times in a row. That's a 6% chance of having to put down 8K. Yeah, and what a 3%. It's even less for 16K. It will eventually pop if you keep going. Now, you may lose <laughs> you, you may lose your entire life savings and everything you have in one day. But more likely, you get to have a fucking life where you do nothing but watch this, ready? Watch. I go into the casino. I say red, which is tails. 500 on okay. red. Ninety of gamblers oh, quit no. right before they hit it big. <laughs> oh quit no! Right before the I didn't. I'd be a four ten of gamblers. Bit 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 Shadow. Shadow. Stop. Stop. Shadow. Shadow. Stop. Stop. Shadow. Shadow. 
Thank you. Yeah, right? There was nothing in that donation to make that happen, by the way. There is no... Something is going on in TTS world. <laughs> Shadow <laughs> Shadow heard about all the money he could make, and he started stumbling. He started stuttering. <laughs> How much? <laughs> anyway, whatever. Look, so, so hold on. So, I lost, right? Oh, no, I'm down $500. $1,000. I got 1K down. Boom. I'm up 500 and I leave for the day. And I'm done. And you know what the best part about this is? The best part is that if you do this every day, if you go into the casino every fucking day and put 500 down and walk out with $500... You will make $182,000 a year. Dude. Are you kidding me? You just go to the fucking casino every day? The casino will definitely keep letting you in. Absolutely. Why wouldn't they? They're betting on you to lose. But as long as you keep dropping money... As long as you keep dropping more and more, you will never lose. If you have infinite money, you're fine. If you have a fund of $100,000, you can flip eight times. Seriously. Isn't that crazy? You're never going to get heads eight times. And if you don't have the money, take out a payday loan. Yeah, exactly. If you don't have the money, go to a payday loan place... Take out like 25k and then that's your base. I'm telling you, bro. I can't believe nobody has ever thought of this. I can't believe I'm the first person to think of this. I just came here and I look at the most suspicious thing ever. Hey, I'm just saying, gambling, not as bad as people say. Wait till I pick up a, uh, a slots sponsor. <laughs> Get it twisted, baby. Get it a little twisted. You're not getting too twisted. Slots are crazy. Roulette? Eh. You know? That's only a little twisted. Okay. Shut up, chat. Let's guess the game. Uh, kind of looks like Eternal Darkness, but I don't think it is. Is this Quake? This is definitely a shooter. Is this Tribes? Uh, it is Quake. It's some quake. Oh, come on, dude. Right? Quake... T quake 2, Quake 3, Quake... I forgot about Unreal Tournament! Dude! I forgot about that game! Oh, yeah! <laughs> I forgot! What a cool game. My bad. I forgot that game existed. Is this Five Nights? What the fuck? Is it just Phasmo? Yeah. Happy Halloween! Okay. Bioshock? Am I in the, uh... Okay. Connie, do you know have any stories about Rake was a 7 from Brawl Sports? Not really. I never met him. I know he lost a crew battle epic style once. He talked a lot of shit, and he lost a, uh, a crew battle for, like, Midwest against Japan or something. Or US against Japan. I don't know. Was he cool? Apparently he was a rager, but I don't, I don't know him personally. 
I never like knew him. I knew he was a uh, he was a Rosalina player in Smash Four. I didn't know he played ball, but dude, I know that Bioshock has been on here before. We're in the bathosphere here, right? I think we're in the bathosphere at the beginning. What a cool game. Oh, it's ugly. What a gross game. Isn't it crazy how you don't remember it looking like this? Good lord. That was at a frostbite, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently he was a rager. I don't know. I don't judge people for being ragers. I get it. Uh, dead spit. Red faction? What the f Dishonored, right? No. That shit looked like red faction. Which I think is Gorilla, the third, the... Oh, it's Kill Zone. One or two. Uh, there are three of them? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> These games are all the same to me. Gross. Okay. Anyway, tonight is YouTube night. Maybe a little bit of gameplay. We got some horror games. Dude, I was actually looking through uh, the Steam sale. What's up? Is a long TTS. Yeah? Well. Never mind. <laughs> Let me try again. Game tables have a sign on them that advises the minimum and maximum allowable bet, like $10 minimum, $1,000 maximum. The maximum bet is chosen to defeat anyone starting off with a minimum bet and trying to use the Martingale strategy. Bet Dublin. Oh, Martingale? That's what it's called? Okay, so I could... Okay, maybe I can't make 500 a day. I could make 300 a day. Right? If I do, I get like two coin flips. <laughs> if I'm lucky, which is literally the whole point soon. Okay, never mind. Is there anything good on sale? I have Hell Pie on my list, but I'm never playing this shit on stream because apparently it's gross. I want to play Mortuary Assistant, maybe. Madison. I don't know. Dome Keeper? That's not a horror game, though, right? Like, I was surprised that was on here. This Backrooms game looks like a meme. I don't know. The Darkness 2 is really good. Wait, The Darkness 2 is on here? Isn't The Darkness the game that, uh... I thought that was an Xbox game. With, like, the, the tentacle guy, right? Just play Killing Floor? I played, uh, Killing Floor 2. It was pretty good. Three of the five vampire games is Castlevania. One of them is Monster Prom, which is probably a dating game, yeah. And the other is the fucking Life is Strange people. <laughs> That's funny. I don't know. I was thinking about getting more cheery assistant. Maybe. This game is not good. Don't get carrying. Don't do it. It's a meme. Oh, yeah. I wanted to play Faith. I bought Faith. Uh, we might play that along with Chicken Feet. I'm kidding. What is this? First person survival stealth horror game about a giant angry chicken. It blows my mind that you can now make a horror game just by going into, like... Did you hear that? Okay. Uh, I think the TTS is broken. It's crazy that you could just go into Unreal. My pleasure to welcome you to. Or, you know, d whatever lets you make a game. Here we Maybe go. even Unity. I'm I'll do this, but I finished the Cult of the Lamb Rog Link. Ooh. Uh, you could just go into Unity and just pick a model and just today. make it giant and then Work make a horror game. Chicken. Lots of death. Okay, that is kind of scary. This is the last... No, I want to see a chicken. Time ever, I am free. Is that the chicken talking? <laughs> is that the chicken jump scare? 
If the chicken catches you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Can we please play this? No, it's $10. I'm not playing chicken feed. No. That's silly. Yahoo! There was a Baldi re-release. Yeah, it's like Baldi Plus. I'm not doing that. That's crazy. All right. Wait. What a lovely song. We got a select amount of videos tonight. Maybe a little bit of gameplay. Maybe gameplay tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. Welcome. I just made some fabulous new friends. No, 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 no. That's and not yeah. what's. That's not what we're doing. I don't know why this stuff's playing. Uh, first up, there was a video. Play chicken feet. <laughs> it's not Watch Mojo. We're not doing Watch Mojo. We're not tonight's not Watch Mojo. Thank you for the ten dollars for Play Chicken Feet. I'm not a monkey. I'm not gonna dance because you give me the money to play. That's the money just for the game. That's not for labor. You just paid for the parts. The parts of the game. It's not Watch Mojo Night. It's YouTube Night in general. Watch Mojo probably next week. We've got a couple series that we're doing next week. By the way, we're spinning the wheel tomorrow, so be here for that. Okay. And then next week is, is you know, the actual thing. So, Thank you, Deadly Critisis Man? Critisis Man. That's tough. Um, listen, uh, a game came out last week that kind of pissed some people off. Sakurai's at it again. Super Smash Bros. Game Concepts. What did he say? I haven't seen this video. I just saw a little bit. I saw some stills of it. Actually, I was waiting because at the end of this video, he teases his next one. <laughs> and I want to see that. I can't wait for the next one. I can't wait. So let's go ahead and see what he's up to. What is he doing to piss some people off, huh? What is this old cat up to? Everybody is talking about it like Dragon King or whatever the, the prototype was that he showed. Ah, there it is. There it is. His greatest shame. Just wait. You got to talk about it sometime, big guy. It's got to come out sometime. I can't wait, dude. There's going to be a meltdown. There's going to be a straight up meltdown on that day. I can't wait. My favorite thing in Japanese is Watashi wa. I don't know why. I love hearing it. I don't, I don't know what it means. I know it has to do when they're talking about the, like I, like themselves. What does it mean? I don't know. I am? Okay. I just like, I just, I like hearing Watashi wa. I miss those computers. I miss the old colorful Max. You know what I mean? No, Watashi wa Kony. Boomer? Yeah, but you didn't get to live through this shit. Dude. You didn't get this, dummy. You didn't get to have these. Your GameCubes, your Switches, or whatever. You didn't get to have these. They're delicious. Look like candy. You know what's crazy? You could probably make a lot of money. I looked at this on Etsy. Um... I wanted to see if there was a way to just buy the shell on Etsy, like a 3D printer. You know what I mean? Because I have the gray one right there. I would like to just buy one of these, but nobody makes them. Isn't that crazy? I feel like it's so easy to 3D print them, but uh, I can't find them. Spit, spit, slash. Zacked! Four-player free-for-all fighting game with no health bars. Not catchy. It's not a good name. 
Hunk. Stealth and Exploration RC Robot Adventure Game. Oh, is that Chibi Robo? Yeah! Oh, wait, that's Five Nights at Freddy's. Pressing the R button changes between the robot's main camera and a security camera. Oh, shit. Oh, no. He done made Five Nights. Damn, Sakurai, stop! Bro, what, what's the guy that made Five Nights? What's his name? He looking real... George? <laughs> what's that guy's name? He looking real sweaty right now. Scott, that's what it is. Sa no, not Sakurai. Scott, Scott, Scott been kind of quiet since this came out. Scott's like, <laughs> he found the document. I thought it was George. Everybody knew Scott. My bad. Scott ran away with a bag. Dude, apparently he has a uh, a movie. The Five Nights movie is coming out soon. Isn't that crazy? ここで貴重な映像、そのプロトタイプ版通称格闘ゲーム竜王をご覧ください。ワオ。looks <laughs> 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 All right, I kind of like that, though. I kind of like the yelling. It's pretty good. Oh, that's just Falcon. That's literally Falcon. That's what Falcon does. Dude, in this game, Falcon kicks and he goes, Eah! I love that. Such a good sound. Dude, that's Norfair. Oh! <gasps> He made Norfair! Look at that! Neat! Cool! <laughs> I'm actually bad jesting. I think that's cool. I think that's neat! So, the Kikai of Matsta. Kikai of Oh, yeah. I forgot about this. Dude, what if PlayStation was on Nintendo? Kony, how many subs to get the Sakurai haircut? Never. He has a middle part. I hate middle parts. I saw Joe, like Joe Sniffy, at the uh, at the HyperX ar uh, Arena at the Ludwig Invitational, and they said something about a middle part. Somebody was talking. I was like, Joe, I love you. I hate your haircut. Don't like middle parts. Don't like it. It's so it it the way it frames the face. Don't like it. I wouldn't do it. I'm a side part guy. Drama? Fat drama. Big drama. I do hate Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Look at the middle part. I don't have the face shape for that. Oh, is it a K-pop thing? Really? That's interesting. Huh. I didn't think of that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that RC game ever come out? Kony doesn't have, have enough hair to do it. Shut up. <laughs> Dude, that RC game ever come out? Yeah, that RC game ever come out? Okay. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Bro, I love Goro in King of Fighters. Or Diamond. He just fucking... <laughs> I love that guy. He's just reaching at all times. I love him. I love him. Dude, come on, man. Oh. Enough, bro. Jesus Christ. You let it slide for a little while. You got the attention you wanted. Jesus. Yeah, is it, I mean, if it's just an attention thing, that's why I don't like banning people, because it's like you get the attention you want. But, like, 
if it doesn't stop, it gets annoying to everybody else. Uh, fucking come on, dude. Stop. Combo just be funny. If you're just funny, I won't. You know what I mean? Like, just be funny. <laughs> okay, so this was the part that I saw. That's the picture that I saw, and honestly. Kind of spitting. It's a different kind of strategy. The guy on the right is depressed. No, in a, in, no, here's the thing. Cody trying to be on scrub quotes again. No, 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 no. You know what the thing is? It's like, and I saw people saying that it becomes more strategic if the combos go crazy. Because then it's like, uh, then it becomes you're looking out for that thing, like the opening, or you're trying to stop people from getting in or whatever. Um, which I guess is true, but that just gets to be like... In my experience, what, what always happens to me... This happened to me when I played Street Fighter V. Um, oh, Juliet is up and talking to herself in bed. That is so cute. Oh, my goodness. She is so sweet. She's, like, playing with her toys. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, she's so sweet. We've been playing a new game together, and she's doing it right now. It's fun. Um, I played Street Fighter V, right, for like a week or two. And I was in like low silver. I wasn't good at all. And I played Cody. And I could beat like most people. And then I got to a level. And then I got, sorry, she's like. Okay. And then I got to a level. You heard that? Yeah, let me turn this down. So, hold on. <laughs> okay. She's quite loud. Yeah, she's going. Okay. Uh, <laughs> very cute, but very distracting. Yeah, she is people talking. Um, I got to a level where I could still beat people in neutral, but my combos would be like one or two hits. And they would do like 40 or 50. And I remembered specifically a Vega player. I was Cody and there was a Vega player. And I was like beating him in most interactions. But he would get more off the hit. And the answer is learn the game more. Right? Which is totally fair. Like that's the thing where you have to put time in. Exactly. That's a fighting game thing. That's a normal thing. But I think that because of that it creates this barrier where it's like there is this... Yahoo! What? I like the free flow of low combo fighting games. High combo games are too win condition heavy. I don't even think it's win condition heavy. I think in my mind, in, in the fighting game, like real fighting games, you have to go through the routine of practicing the combos. You know what I mean? You have to go to the dojo, go to training mode, lab them out, Get the muscle memory. It's almost like, you know, it's it's like being in the fucking dojo. It's, it's being in the gym. You're getting your reps in, right? You're learning that stuff. It doesn't come intuitively always. FGC games are just Guitar Hero. I mean, kind of. But again, that's not a bad thing. That's not bad. But I'm less interested in that than I am in the flow and function of adaptable in the moment decision making does that make sense i want to fight the opponent not my controller yeah and i think that's where it comes down to is like i'm not of i'm not a fan of regular fighting games because i don't get joy out of sitting alone in a training mode for hours i can respect it and i love watching it and a lot of people that i like do it but i just don't like doing that smash is a lot more intuitive in that way but i think it is as the games have progressed it has gotten more linear right i mean like when i watch wario right in in ultimate wario he's looking for that neutral air because he does the neutral air into up air into up air you know what i mean it's like he has a very clear like zero to 60 and i think all characters have that 
And that's true. Yeah, Smash 64 is super touch of death, which is crazy because it becomes like it's it's like the game is supposed to be open and 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 sort of improvisational, but it's not. I don't know. It's interesting. Tekken 7 mid to high level is currently played by the fact that one combo and a couple pokes ends around because the combos do so much more damage than in previous games. Akuma was mega hated in Season 3 because Akuma with meter can win with one combo. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that would be... that's that's I ran into that at a very uh, low level in, in, in Street Fighter V. Are we forgetting Bayo? I think even Bayo has to be a little bit more adaptable because people SDI out of your stuff. It takes a little bit more with Bayonetta because you got to follow DI. People pop out. It's a little bit different, you know? I just, I'm not a guy who enjoys, I don't know. I'm not a guy who enjoys looking up combos and then performing the combos in games, you know? That's just not my thing. Which is, I think, why I liked Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Because it's all dial a combo. I love that shit. There is no... In, 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 in Mortal Kombat, there is zero timing. You just put the string in, and then the string comes out. And it's like, oh, fuck yeah. I love that. Yes. Absolutely. What about different combo routes like anti-airs and counter -hits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's definitely phase two. But I can't even get to that point because I'm losing to phase one. And I think that that's where you unlock more fun. Don't get me wrong. Fighting games are infinitely deep. I'm just less interested in them. Because I don't want to work. That's me. Which is a skill issue. Oh, it absolutely is. But people like have different skills. You get what I'm saying? People are going to have different skill sets. My skill set is I like hitting less buttons. That's all. I like 50-50. Falcon, Kony's skill is dying to special move only Falcon on Wi-Fi. Motherfucker, race car Falcon is very strong. I recommend everybody in this chat get on Elite Smash tonight and play B-Move Falcon. I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's very good. I'm telling you, it's very good. It's strong. I'm telling you. Duh. And it's cool because it creates tension. But it's a different kind of tension than when somebody's in the corner taking chip damage. Which is neat. Fuck command inputs, all pretzel ass. I always forget how to do a full circle input. <laughs> I I like literally once a year I'll re I'll forget. I'll be like, wait, how do I do full circle? Oh yeah, you buffer it, or you're like in the middle of a move, like, <laughs> or you jump, or you. Eh. I just keep forgetting. Ew, the pretzels. Making pretzels on that. No, that's gross. Bro, did he kill him in one hit? What is Geese doing? Oh, no, that was like half his bar. Okay. He didn't even die. I will play Street Fighter 6, though, because they're going to make it easy for me. Can't wait. Have a taste of my fizz. という概念が生まれています。はや。素早く倒すとより強く攻撃したりジャンプできる。六四でアナログスティックが実装される際、Oh, so this is like a Mario moment. It's the analog thing, right? Yeah.無段階の方向、無段階の深度に目が行きがちですが、私は入力が完成する時間に目をつけました。That's neat. なお、スマブラといえば、任天堂の。Purin. <laughs> It's so weird to me that Pokemon have different names over there. I know it's normal. Thank you, Clumpy Butters. I just don't like that name. Ugh. Wait, D-Kong? No. Huh? What is he in, in, in 64? Is it just DK? Huh? 
That's weird. Why? Why would you change that? Damn, I bet whoever had to put that in was mad as hell. <laughs> in here, it's five letters. I gotta put Jigglypuff? <laughs> How do I fit that? And this is before Photoshop, so you can't, like, tighten it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> what a fucked up day! J-Puff! これは企画書上には回答らず、後から交渉することになります。コンシューマーの格闘ゲームにおいて難しい点の一つ、主役がいきなり。コンシューマーの格闘ゲームにおいて難しい点の一つ。はあ。はあ。Huh? Huh? Wait a minute, I just realized this game came up. Somebody submitted this. To, it's you. No, it's not. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> I'm not Tony. I look like none of that. No part of that looks like me. I uh, Photoshop first released in 1990. Damn, really? I somebody submit this into the uh, the the weird fighting game character thing. I forgot, uh, dude. And Sakurai acknowledged it. He plays a lot of games. What the fuck are these games? Sakura Chili and Pepper? Naga? Is that Shao Kahn? What the- Dude, is he- Is he, like, flexing here? I've never heard of these games. This guy's a fucking nerd, yeah. Huh? The 90s were so full of good games, said Kony. I never said that. 90s are terrible. There's like five good games on the NES. Name five? Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers 2, Mario Brothers 3, Bucky O'Hare, Rockin' Cats. There. Kirby? Ah, Kirby's Adventure. There. Take out Mario 2. Zelda? Uh-uh. No. Tetris. Doesn't count. Castlevania. Uh. Take out Bucky. D mods, take him out. Get that guy. Bucky O'Hare is the best game on the NES. Punch out. Ah, I forgot punch out. Okay, okay. Donkey Kong Country. Underage chatter. Get mods. Get help them. Get them to the place they need to go. Go to Dreams Chat. That's true. アーケードの格闘ゲームならとりあえずプレイしてみることは可能だし、他の人がプレイしているのも見ているわけだから問題解決。あ、that's kind of neat. I bet Nintendo didn't want that, bro. <laughs> Most popular characters. Most popular characters? I know two of those. When this game came out, I had no idea who these two were. Yes. If I was Nintendo, I probably wouldn't let them do that either. Mario fighting Pikachu? No. Nope. Yup. They're nice. They're friends. They don't fight. Nope. Don't let them fight. They wouldn't do that. Did the 64 have... Fighting games? Like, it had, like, Clay Fighter and, like, Battle Gods or whatever. Killer Instinct? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. War Gods, that was it. I I'm saying, like, a normal fighting game. I think MK 
64 was on it. Arcade ports? Were there? On 64? MK Ultimate. Really? WWF No Mercy. Wasn't Barney in a fighting game? Yeah, that wasn't on 64, though. Okay. The dojo! Yeah, that's a tough name to say, but thank you for Prime. I don't think anybody watching this was alive back then. I don't think anybody watching this was alive back Wait, Kirby didn't have a voice before this. <gasps> That's so cute! This is Kirby's first voice! Oh my god! Cool! Oh, he didn't want that, though. He's acting like you could have that now. He never wanted it that way. You could do that, I guess. Nope. That's Kobe. He didn't want that, bro. Okay, that's pretty cool. I love the ending music. Oh, hell yeah! Oh, he's so nervous. Look at his face. Look at his face. Oh, he's scared to death, bro. You're talking melee, huh? Oh. You're gonna be in trouble. I hope he talks about melee and then brawl. I can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be bad. Dude, melee people are gonna eat him alive. People are gonna be hateful. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy, bro. I can't wait for the brawl one. Remember all that melee shit I said? Fuck all that. I hate that. I hope he mentions Mango. Dude, okay. Do you think he'll mention one professional player or a professional scene at all? Do you think he'll talk about it in any capacity? I don't think he would, right? I don't think so. Wave dashing? No. No, no. Definitely not. He will mention it, but not directly. Okay. Alright, well, uh, not a bad movie. I mean, I thought there was more in there about fighting games. Because everybody was getting mad at that image, but it was pretty tame. I think he's spitting. Poisonally, I think he's spitting. Who's the most Nintendo-friendly pro player out there? Axe. Axe. It's Axe. It is absolutely Axe. Juan? No. It's not Hbox. Mewtwo King? No. No. Amsa? Yes. Actually. Amsa and X. Those are good. Bobby Big Balls says, Stop pooping, Grandma. <laughs> this is this is a whole story. This is a whole... You, you could just tell... I can, I can see you in my mind's eye right now. I know what you look like. <laughs> That's funny. Pooping grandma must be stopped. Renai? You think so? Renai, I think, did do uh did do some stuff for the game, yeah. I'm still literally play tested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that we're like they are allowed to compete now, but Here we go! Yeah? Ekuma clip. Oh, Akuma. Not Ekuma. Oh, is this the Tekken thing? Okay, now he's letting him. He's letting him move. He's letting him demon flip. But you know, Chikuru not afraid. He's just Tekken is so intimidating. By the way, I love watching Tekken. I would never play this. This looks so complicated. He's trying to pile on the pressure. Counter hit. Brilliantly timed. I hated playing Tekken. Yeah, I just I, I I'm I'm genuinely gonna really try Street Fighter Six. And by that, I mean I'll play it for like a week and a half and then decide if I'm going to keep going. But like, I really love what they're doing for Street Fighter Six, and I hope that I can stick with it. We'll see. No, just that he's going to get the wall damage. Yep. Standing two. Savage Sword. So it's fine because there are three win rounds. But, what, but like, which one's a stock? One he needs Smash one Brain, if he gets that one chest. Here, it's gonna, oh my gosh. If he gets one hit here, it's party time. Oh. 
It's party time and Chikorin's invited. Is it party time? Oh, it is. Oh, oh, oh it's party time. It's party. Why did you say that, Mark? I, I what? Parties, oh man. my God! Look at the health. And, and the look demon. The Wait, going. you can just Let's keep go. going? He went legend to left. Oh my goodness! Is he? He probably has a sliver. No way. What? Oh my God! Oh my! So now it's a 50-50. Oh no! Wait, did he get knocked down at the end? What happened here? Oh, he caught get up. That's get up kick, right? Parry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go! Oh, that's cool. That's cool. It's shitty, but it's cool. Chat, you didn't die. Chat, no, you didn't die. Chat, no, you didn't die. Chat, no, you're okay. You're okay. Chat, you're fine. <laughs> chat, chat, you're fine. Chat. <laughs> Everyone in chat died at once. It's like a bomb went off. Akuma killed everyone. Oh, fuck, I'm dead. Dude. <laughs> Tekken's ability to just bounce somebody on their face. I wish Kazuya did this in, in Ultimate. I really do. Because I feel like the way Kazuya do it isn't fun. I think the way he bounces people on, on their fists like this. That's so funny to me, dude. I love that. Nair kind of does it, uh, I guess. Slightly. Somewhat. All right, one other video, and then we're going to get the Green Chef. Uh, this video was recommended by quite a few people, and I am very interested. This is a sick topic, and I can't wait to get into it. I love this. These are <laughs> the top 10 most disliked IGN reviews of all time. Now... In case you guys don't know, IGN posts their videos on YouTube. Uh, they, they post all of their reviews. And I'm very curious as to what people hate. I know there's probably the too much water thing with Pokemon, right? Surely. But I have to know. I sincerely have to know what are the worst reviews. Not even the worst. What do gamers hate the most? Because gamers aren't right most of the time. Coney, this video is incredibly bad. <laughs> well, I'll be the judge of that. Video game journalists. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, let's... Let's see. Inscrutable folk, but in many ways, we should be thanking them. Because every now and then they review. Wait, is he on the side of the gamers? You a game so poorly that it causes us gamers who are usually fighting amongst ourselves to call a brief truce. Oh no, he's on the side the of the gamers. And fight oh back no, against the common enemy. He's on and the side IGN of the gamers. The poster child for bad video game journalism. I thought I'd create this list. <laughs> this is a lot of bad chesting. Yeah, we went from twerking to civil war to South Park. This is painting a very clear picture for me. GM being the poster child for bad video game journalism. We might pivot. I thought I'd create this list of the top 10 most disliked IGM reviews of all time. Okay, Because yeah. what brings gamers together more than pure, unbridled hate. You know what's weird to me? When did we accept gamer as, like, an identifier? Because I remember, like, six or seven years ago, people said it ironically. You know what I mean? People would, like, say it ironically, and I think the ironic turned into real. You know, was it Gamergate? Ah, it might be, actually. That's true. People started accepting it, dude. It still sounds ironic to me. I guess it depends on what circles you inhabit, you know? Yeah. Oh, my God. What? So, coming in at number 10, we have their review of Call of Duty Black Ops 3 from 2015, sitting at a respectable Wait, is this the Future Warfare dislikes. one? Why? Well, IGN once again gave a Call of Duty game I always thought that a looked stupidly cool. high score of 9N once again. Stupidly. Again, gave a Call of Duty game a stupidly high <laughs> Sorry. A score of 9.2 out of 10. That does seem with crazy. With zero cons. If it has no cons, why not give it a 10 then? See, not only do we get angry when IGN rate a game too low, 
We get just as angry when they rate a game too high. I didn't think I dude, I did not think it was this kind of video. I got I've been mixed. I I th <laughs> I th I thought this video was the opposite. I th I'm staying on this. This video rules. I'm staying on this. This is funny. I'm not moving, but holy shit, I did not know it was like this. Especially when that should have pre-watched it. Franchise yeah. like Call of Duty, which releases. It's good. Yeah, is this Guru Larry? It sounds just like Guru Larry. It's the same boring. He's the guy we thought we were mocking. Yes, I thought this was. I thought we were. <laughs> I thought this guy was making fun of gamers for like hate brigading, but this guy is in the brigade. He's in the army. Like. <laughs> But maybe he's right. But maybe he's right. I'm curious. I'm actually curious. Maybe he's spinning. I don't know. Yeah. He is the gamer. Let's see. Bro is the general. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Uh, maybe he's right. Let's see. IGN keeps giving them nines out. He sounds nothing like Guru Larry. Slight. I think it's the the way that he talks. It's the it's the inflection and the the accent. Ends. And what really pisses I'm gonna get on gamer pills is when they rate games that are clearly more innovative, original, with better mechanics, graphics, and gameplay lower than the latest Call of Duty game. What is this? What game is? What is he talking about? So keep this score in mind as we move on down the list. <laughs> pisses on their chips. What is this screen he's on? Is that Mike Matei? We have their Sonic Unleashed review from 2008. Oh, well, this one's just Sonic fans. Dislikes. Damn! Sonic fans go crazy! The reviewer basically tears the game to shreds. There's one thing you should know about Sonic Unleashed before spending your hard-earned money on it. It's a big piece of garbage. <laughs> big piece of garbage. Ah, uh, it's, it's only one here. Like this, only one here got a job at IGN. Now, I have a theory when it comes to Sonic games. Someone <laughs> at never... Sega hates the Hedgehog with all his might. I've comes... never seen this game in action. That running is so funny. Sonic games. Someone at Sega hates the Hedgehog with all his might, and he's going about trying to sabotage the franchise with these awful games. Oh, by the way, I know somebody who got to play Frontiers early. Um, I know a person. Um... Was it Alfred? No. Someone else. Uh, I would tell you, apparently, it's good. Hmm. Yeah. Seriously. So you know two people. I mean, I, 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 I didn't talk about it with Alfred. If he was there, I don't know, but... I heard that they had an event. Somebody told me. Apparently it's good. Do you trust their opinion? I don't know them very well, but... I mean, I, you know, they told me it was good. I'll trust them. If it was Jacob, I, I, I'll i ask him, actually. I should ask Jacob. Because I would trust Jacob, but... This, uh, this other person, I'm gonna keep it a little... But he's, uh... Yeah, he still ends up some somehow giving... He literally mentioned it last podcast. He said he got to go. He didn't talk to me about it, though. In the game. Not for very long, anyway. It's almost like they flew out for free to play a game. Yeah, maybe they got a little buttered up. I don't know. A 4.5. He claims... Woo! What? OMG, Cunny, they removed your bastard. Shut up! <laughs> the jump button is unresponsive. <laughs> then proceed Come on! To over the boot. You do this every stream. Boost ramp to his death. The jump button can be fatally unresponsive at times, and it's just a lot of... Trial and error gameplay that can get a little bit repetitive. <laughs> Why did Sega and it's just put a lot of these boxes on the path? Why? Why did they think they were innovating? Of trial and error. <laughs> they put the fuck. Whoa! Physics. Get a little bit repetitive after a while. And his hot take on why he shouldn't have to upgrade Sonic Speed is donkey kick combo. <laughs> he has a donkey kick combo. Is that like his forward tilt and smash? The little kicky? I love that move. So fresh. Ah! I mean, really, do I need to pay to upgrade Sonic's speed? Shouldn't Sonic be as fast as he can be from the get-go? Isn't that the reason why I bought a Sonic game in the first place? Oh, and you can cleanse people's souls by taking pictures of them. I'm not even joking about that. 
In the world of video games, why would oh, taking God. a picture to cleanse someone's soul be so far-fetched? I mean, he knows he's playing a game in which he's controlling an anthropomorphic werewolf hedgehog, doesn't he? But at the end of the day, by 2008 standards, Sonic Unleashed wasn't that bad. I hate both of them. I hate both of them. I hate the guy for saying that... The, I, I, <laughs> I don't like anybody here. Uh, the, the, the one guy is is mad because you take pictures to cleanse souls, and the other guy is mad at him for being mad about that. It, it's a fucking game. Is this a bit? Gamers like I just annoyed at another IGN reviewer haphazardly reviewing a game they clearly had no interest in. Coney, look up Sonic Unleashed Death Scream. Okay. I got a Game Grumps video at the top. Ah! <laughs> uh, is that it? Whoa! 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 Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Sitting at a cozy 21,000 dislikes, Uncharted? the 2016 review of Uncharted 4 is at number 8. So, what were we angry about this yeah. time? Yeah. Though it's let down by a lack, <laughs> we. lack of imagination and some self-indulgence, especially in a third act that drags on far too long. A 9 out of 10. The She's right. bloated third act. She's you know right. The game's going to be good when IGN give it a 9 Ow! out of 10. Jesus. And we still come after them with pitchforks. <laughs> oh, I love us. But IGN have to meet. This guy is like a politician. This guy is like a fucking politician. He's pandering so hard. Eat us halfway. Oh my god. Give Black Ops free a 9.2 no cons and Uncharted. <laughs> it is weird to me when games like when GameSpot or this site like when they do give a high score with no cons, and I get why, because like what they're trying to say is like it does everything it does well. There are no cons, but it's not ambitious enough. But you can't like put that in a con. I think, then make it a 10. Yeah, but you can't, like, I'm trying to think, I, if I had an example in front of me of, like, a 9 out of 10 with no cons, because I've seen that before, and usually I'm like, eh, yeah, I get it, you know? Then you have to find a fault. Yeah, but, like, ultimately that fault, I don't know. We could get into this conversation forever. Four and nine, calling its third Lots of small things, but no major faults. Yeah, kind of. There's nothing wrong with Pac-Man, it's just Pac-Man. Yeah, like, I don't. Elden Ring? No, Elden Ring had a bloated ending. Dude, I, I've talked about this on stream forever. Elden Ring, the last fourth of it, maybe fifth of it, gets bad, I think. I think. Hades? That's a great example, actually. No spoilers? No spoilers. I think the ending of Elden Ring is so fucking bad. And everybody's like, well, the second half of Dark Souls sucks. Not as bad. I don't think it's nearly as bad. I think Hades is a 9 out of 10 with no cons. I wouldn't call it a 10 out of 10. Because it's just good. You know? Act of imagination. Wrong, you're just bad. No, I'm wrong because I didn't do jumping R2 the entire game. And, and just beat the game by cheating. Cheater. When the entirety... Second half of Dark Souls is so much worse. Nope. Black. Not unless you play the randomizer that I did. I, I, still, I still got fucking Gwen sitting in the fucking dungeon. Gwen is still down there. In the crypt. Cops 3 is a bloated third oh, God. act. No, a bloated third act. Yeah, dude. Uncharted 4's ending was uh, too long. They were spitting. But they had to wrap up a lot of threads. I get it. The clam? <laughs> Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition slashes its way into our number 7 slot with 24,000 dislikes. Jeez. Now, this review has all the hallmarks of a classic bad IGM review. Okay. Firstly, the review contains a massive spoiler where they show, <laughs> without warning, a late game unlockable character in the menu screen, which would spoil the whole first half cool. of the game. Now, cool. you'd think IGM would take that the rules. video down, edit out the spoiler, and re-upload it. But instead, <laughs> they decided to leave this pinned comment in the comment section. We inadvertently included footage. If you're concerned about the reveal, oh my god, they put it in the comments. They didn't even put it in the video. <laughs> Lazy bastards. Next, the. <laughs> Gen 
genuine hate. Oh my god. I decided to leave this pinned comment oh in the god. comment section. Lazy bastards. Oh my. That didn't sound phoned in. That sounded like it was from the heart. Next, he said that with his chest. On to call Melia, one of the weaker characters from the main campaign, a sentiment Xenoblade fans strongly disagree with, and then calls the character Dunban, Duncan. This time, however, they did edit out the mistake. But even in the re-edit, he still pronounces the name wrong, with a horrendous drop in audio quality, which sounds like he did the voice edits on one of these. PG is the story goes to some really, really weird places that are as confusing as they are preposterous. The core Xenoblade experience remains intact here. Lovable meathead Ryan, or the stoic and Wait. inscrutable Dunbon. They Wait, so they edited it, but they didn't take out the spoiler? Why? W that's weird. Huh. I mean, the name wrong is annoying. Saying a character is weak and having people be mad at you is very funny. That would be like if you reviewed Lisa and you were like, oh, Terry's a joke character. Because you didn't, like, look at his move. You know what I mean? Like, there are some characters that, like, if you're making a review quickly, you just won't know, you know? Cool Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. The best version of Xenoblade Chronicles we've ever had. Giving it an 8 out of 10, which is a lower score than they gave the Leave original release and 3DS port. Work that one out. Well, I mean, that's just different reviewers, right? In at number six is their Shin Megami Tensei 5 review with 36,000 dislikes. Are these all gonna be JRPGs? And IGM managed to piss everyone off within the first six seconds of the review. How? Shin Megami Tensei 5 feels like the edgier, less sociable younger brother of Persona 5. The reviewer complains about how certain aspects of the game that... are not the same as a Persona game, which to Shin Megami Tensei yeah. fans is the entire point. It's... Isn't that... Isn't that true? Is that, uh, is that not? I mean, right? SMT was first. Oh, did he say SMT was second? Oh, never mind. No, I knew Tensei was first, but I thought that it, I thought he was saying, okay. I didn't hear that part. No, yes. Persona is the spinoff. Yeah, I do know that. I thought just saying that it's like more broody and serious is like true and less social. But I didn't hear that he said it was old. He didn't say anything about which came first? You. Oh, he said younger brother. Oh, I see. So people interpreted that. Shin Megami Tensei 5 feels like the edgier, less sociable younger brother of Persona 5. Ah, uh, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's definitely an older brother vibe, too. That's weird. The reviewer complains Whatever. about how certain aspects of the game are not the same as a Persona game, which to Shin Megami Tensei fans is the entire point. Yeah. It's not so much a standalone review of Shin Megami Tensei 5, but more a video comparing two different series and taking marks off of one game because it's not like the other. Where I SMT can get to that's frustrating. I get that. short for me as a massive Persona fan, though, was the writing. It takes upwards of 20 hours to find any personal motivation beyond survival and figuring out what's going on, in contrast to Persona 5, which makes things personal right away. That's weird. Why would you like Persona but not this? I mean, I know that this one's a lot more serious, right? Like, Tensei's a lot more, like, grounded, but... The story did suck. Because dating sim? <laughs> I mean, Shin Megami Tensei always looked very unapproachable from the outside, you know? But... I just couldn't shake the feeling that this was Persona without the heart. Without the unforgettable companion characters, the okay, well, this guy's just... personal story, the incredible soundtrack, and the jaw-dropping twists and turns. Okay. Giving the game an 8, with the only negatives being that it's not like Persona, is mental. And fans of the Shin Megami Tensei wow. series were absolutely right to call this one out. I kind of get that. I kind of I kind of understand why they'd be annoyed. I kind of get that. Right? Eh. My mind always goes to Paper Mario, you know what I mean? Things are hotting up now. Dude, stop. Stop making fun of British people. Leon Massey, are you still here? I'm so sorry for my chat. Doom 2016 blasts its way in at number five with a healthy 42,000 dislikes. Gee! Oh, wait, I remember this one. Didn't this guy suck at FPS? He starts waffling on about how Doom 2016 feels to Doom. 
For some, this is exactly what Doom should be because it resembles the 1993 game of the same name. Yeah. But with all due respect, those are desperately low expectations. But it doesn't really distinguish itself by recreating 25-year-old gameplay. Two minutes and 15 well. seconds is all the time he gives to reviewing Doom's main campaign before moving on to the multiplayer. Okay, that okay, the gamers were right here. <laughs> The gamers were correct on this one. This game fucking rules. Which he also hates. I I never have been a Doom guy. I've never been a Doom guy, but this game is fucking amazing. Fixed power up placement the and Doom games are give so good. Players who know the map an advantage. I think no. I might be gamer pill. Really? I might Do be gamer pill. You mean to build. tell me that if players learn the maps and best weapon locations, they have an advantage? This makes the decision to restrict access to weapons and include a Call of Duty style leveling system that much stranger because it gives experienced players another leg up with access to better weapons and more powerful demon runes. So experienced players that put more Bro, time and effort into weapons here? and more powerful Look at they grabbed a guy what Demon room. Die! <laughs> I want to do that in a game. That rules. So experienced Ugh. players that put more time and effort into the multiplayer get access to better weapons and items. You're blowing my mind, IGN. Blowing my mind. So what was the verdict on one of the best shooters uh, to have come out in the last 15 years? A 7.1 out of 10. Repetitive arena? Is this just for multiplayer? I like this guy now. Yeah, he's kind of based, actually. Somebody needs to take IGN down. The high bar That's crazy. Expect. I'm a gamer now. By the way, we're not even halfway done. <laughs> you were up to four. No way this video released this decade. Oh, it's like eight days old. <laughs> yeah. Eight days ago. <laughs> but it feels older, right? Doesn't this feel... Like a 2016 video. I Amazingly, love it. we have a tie at our number four spot between two different oh, wow. Pokemon game reviews. Huh. Pokemon Alpha Sapphire Omega Ruby and Pokemon Sword and Shield, both on 45,000 dislikes. Jeez. And believe it or not, Sapphire Ruby is probably the most infamous review on this list because it gave birth to the most popular IGN meme, Too Much Water. What did they mean by that, by the way? I guess he'll tell us, but I didn't... You know, I'm not a Pokemon guy. I don't know what that means. They're right? <laughs> Hoenn is a lot of water. There's a lot of water on the map. Is this like a Wind Waker moment? <laughs> Where there was too much, like, navigating on the ship? That's real? It's not a new complaint, but... The, the water traversal was ass. Okay. The re water means random encounters. Ah! So that's like the grass. If you played too much grass. Look up a map of Hoa. Hold on. Uh, like this? That? That? That's not that bad. Mind you, there's underwater too. The yellow square is all water. Oh, Hang this? Owned by Team Magnet. Oh, never mind. I don't know what Team Magma is. Is that like Team Rocket Boat and Hoenn? What is Hoenn? Like, what's the what's what's that supposed to be? Gen three? No, no, no. But like, what? Japan? Okay. I think it's interesting to see like what like you know the New York. Pokemon game or the France Pokemon game. I think that's really cool. Well, in balance type-wise, heavily favoring water Pokemon. It's especially noticeable in Alpha Sapphire since the villainous Team Aqua uses a lot of water types. It just feels like there are water Pokemon in nearly every battle, and I have an overleveled Pikachu to show for it. You also have to navigate many bodies of water, which makes much of the late game incredibly tedious. Okay. Other than saying the game is too much water um, and too many hidden moves, she doesn't seem to have anything else negative to say about the uh, remaster. I mean, that and I guess Pokemon seems like fans, enough to me. As understanding and compassionate as they may be, we're just I feel like that's a fair to thing to be annoyed too by. Too much water would have such a heavy effect on the right? overall rating of the game. Which the reviewer gives a 7.8. So politely picking up their pitchforks, they completely annihilated the review and created a meme so powerful uh. it now completely embodies the entire 
bad video game journalism topic. Cool. Right, on to Sword and Shield. Same right. nostalgic charm, but it doesn't fall victim to getting stuck in the past. It streamlines and fixes many of the series' long-running problems, from excessive tutorials to the tedium of navigating random encounters. Simply put, Sword and Shield are the best Pokemon games I have ever played. Ugh. I, uh, I'll never forget. I will never forget. Sword and Shield just came out. I was in bed, and I turned on a stream just to watch it, like when I went to bed, and Shofu was playing. And Shofu was on a boss fight with, like, a rock star guy. And the rock star guy is doing this into a microphone. He's, like, at a concert. No sound coming out. Nothing happening. Not even music. No vocals, not even music. And I said, oh, my God, people love this game. That's unbelievable. I I don't understand how anybody could enjoy this other than six-year-olds who haven't been exposed to any other media. It's so weird, dude. Hold on. Let me see if I can find the scene. What is it? Piers concert? Yeah, so he went through all of these guys. And then there's this. Yeah. You can hear him stomping his foot. What? There's not even music. This is insane to me. This is a triple-A studio. This is the most profitable media franchise in fucking history. Why are they booing? I thought this was like a concert. What? Because he's not singing? Oh, he can't sing. Oh, is that actually what's happening here? Where did the mic go? Wait a minute. <laughs> he equipped it. He put it back into his backpack. That's not crazy. That's not that crazy. It's fine. It's silly. He put it in the inventory. It's not that bad. He simply put it away. Yeah, exactly. Like the bike. It's a Pokemon game. I can't be mad at them for that. You sound like this YouTuber right now. <laughs> you sound like this fucking guy. Oh, wait. No, I sound like that guy because he said that taking a picture... Uh, does your mic change? You're playing the werehog. You take a picture, take a soul. <laughs> uh, I'm the guy now. You're and IGN. Big words from IGN there. It seems that some people like this game and some people think it's an absolute underwhelming letdown. But it's no question that everyone was expecting the second Pokemon game on a home console to look much better than it did and uh include... All pre-existing Pokemon, which it didn't. Oh, well, dude, come on. Poke okay, I think Pokemon is shitty for backing themselves into a corner like this, but I also feel like uh, gamers, come on. Causing the whole Game come on. Freak Lied controversy. <laughs> you can't have when 900 they the Pokemon. they're not including come all pre-existing Pokemon was because they were remaking character models and their animations, not just porting them over from older games. Then a Reddit post surfaced showing allegedly leaked data mined comparisons of Sword and Come Shield's on, character man. models alongside character models from older games that seemed to completely contradict what Game Freak had previously said, aka Game Freak. Let Game Freak be lazy. They have infinite money and it was possible on a 3DS. Okay, if the, if the complaint is that they're not using their money correctly, I agree. But also, like, just don't buy the game. Freak lied. These games so, have sucked for a while. I I think we're not just seeing people disagreeing with IGN's stupidly high score for know, another Pokemon game. You can't not buy Pokemon. Protest. Brother, I've done that for 30 years. Dislikes after feeling they had been lied to by the developers and IGN one. hilariously getting caught but in I did the like Go. Go was Gotta nice. love it. Or not Go. Uh, snap. But also Go, actually. <laughs> Both. 
cruising its way into our number three Yo! review of Days Gone. Isn't this game on sale right now? From 2019 with 50,000 dislikes. Jeez. What did IGN do now? Well, first off, this is the same reviewer that gave Uncharted 4 with its bloated third act uh -huh. a nine. Sure. So she was already on the Sony fanboys naughty dog list. And boy, howdy, she pulled no punches here, uh -huh. giving Days Gone a 6.5, calling it bloated as well. Days Gone yeah. ultimately feels bloated, like a movie that goes on for an hour longer than it needs to or should have. Sure. There's definitely a good game in here somewhere. You can feel it in the crunchy combat and when running from an enormous freaker horde. Yeah. Some fine tuning and editing could have removed the tedium and highlighted what makes this game unique and interesting. Sure, but yeah. Days Gone writes that sounds about right. I haven't played the game, but like the middle of the dusty road and never I feel like she's right now the general consensus is that the game is pretty good and I think gamers felt the 6.5 was unjustified and found some of the reviewers criticisms disingenuous what did you like want here, for instance when she criticizes the bad writing which days gone and sits on bro th okay this scene is fucking crazy this scene Absolutely. He's at his wedding. What? Bro, he's at his wedding with the biker vest in the backwards cap. I'm telling largely through tedious, barely interactive flashbacks of him and his wife. The dialogue's uh, pretty bad. But only if you promise to ride me as much as you ride your bike. On the face of it, you'd think the reviewer has a point. I Out do. Out of context, that line does seem really cringy. Yeah. But earlier on in the game, Deacon's wife, Sarah, specifically asked Deacon not to say that line at their wedding, only to surprise him by saying it herself. The reviewer... Oh. Uh... Well, it's still weird in context, but that's still... That changes things a little. No, 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 no. That does change things a little bit. It's 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 worse because it becomes something you know she's going to say later, later. You know what I mean? It's a little better because that's setting him up as a shithead. But also it's like, why would she say that? You know what I mean? It's... I'd pivot... <laughs> I'm saying I can see why that would be disingenuous, you know? It's like the Princess Beach line, you know? It makes sense if you play Death Stranding. <laughs> totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. Corpo humor weird. Yeah, it's definitely a corporation that, yeah. Totally. Also hits us with this absolute. Beach. I guess it's a little. Deacon different. can also unlock a slow mo ability early on, which makes no sense for a biker, but it allows you to relieve the pressure for a moment if you get overwhelmed. It's a game with guns. What on earth is she blathering about? <laughs> Why should riding a bike stop us from having a slow motion ability in our zombie shooting game? I, okay, I hate everybody here. I hate everybody here, bro. I don't like any of these people. There are no winners. No heroes in today's America. Oh, man. Why w why can't they have a slow-mo? It's a video game, but also, why is this guy... Because Days Gone's missions suffer Rose from blathering. repetition across the board. Oh, what's that, IGN? You don't like repetitive missions? Then why did you give the 888th Assassin's Creed game a 9.2 only six months Yo! early? Yo! Blow the fuck out! Blow the fire! Chill, bro! Oh my god! Got her ass! IGN He's fucking review. spitting on that one! Pissing off every Sony <laughs> fanboy again is why this review he took crazy the number on three one. slot. Yo! Two. There are two more with nine minutes left. Oh my god. Dude. Unbelievably, at number two, we have a three-way tie. What? Oh, dude, is that Bikini Bottom? Didn't Alien that get isolation, like a four? Death Stranding and SpongeBob SquarePants battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated reviews all managed to achieve 51,000 dislikes each. What is that top left game? Alien Isolation? And all three games couldn't be more different from one another, which just showcases yeah. IGN's remarkable ability to enrage gamers regardless of what types of games they review. At this point, 
it actually starts to become impressive. Damn, actually, the Death Stranding one, that's crazy. 50 fucking 50. That's nuts. Right down the center. When I began researching for this video, watching one bad IGM review after the other, I looked a lot like this. But by the time I got to the end, on finding out that they'd managed to reach 51,000 dislikes on three separate occasions, the agony and pure frustration started to melt away, replaced by amazement and a cheerful bubbly light-hearted sense of childlike wonder this feels like a satire video i, I it, it doesn't feel real i love it i love this guy i agree i i i'm 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 starting to i'm turning now i think i think i like this guy now i want to watch more of his movies so how did IGN manage to rack up 153,000 dislikes across three Concerned. reviews well a good he got me bro he got I'm gamer pill. In isolation, a five point. Wait, is that what the monster reviews. looks like? Well, a good start would be giving. Okay, I have a quick. Okay, old friends in the chat. Uh, do you guys remember the one and only Alien Isolation stream I did? I hated this game. I hated this game. I played it for like an hour. I streamed it once. You couldn't find the alien. Yeah, I was, like, in an early area, and I had to stealth, and it was so slow that I was like, this isn't fun. I hate this. You don't get to the good part. I didn't. I was literally, like, half an hour in. I was miserable. Were you on hard? I don't think so. I hated it, dude. Is that when you kicked the baby? <laughs> I, was it? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember kicking a baby in a game. I remember there being a bit of a discussion about killing Kayla, which I did not do. That was actually a monster. But I don't remember kicking a baby. I'm not sure about that. Having alien isolation, I did not a 5.9 out of 10. But when the genuine scares of being Dude, I agree. by an unstoppable predator yep. are so diluted by Spitting. repetition and I didn't padding, like this game. isolation's yep. epic length really does work against it. Yep, someday, true. So someone true. Someone is going to make an incredible alien video game that checks every box. No. Nope. Sadly, isolation is not it. Needless to say, I agree. gamers were outraged and judged. Was isolation the one with the bugged AI? Bugged? Was it bugged? I know I, Alien Isolation had like an AI, like it had two ah! AIs running at the same time or something. This is only one here secret YouTube account. <laughs> we gotta check back in on him. Remind me at the end of this movie. Judging by the comment section, still check are. him Metacritic. And rightly so. It's one of that the was most Marines. Wait, really? The two AIs? No, I thought this game had two different AIs. One for like the Xenomorph and one for. No, this game had two AIs. I think. No, not Marine. No, because this game had... The alien had two brains. No. Stupid. The broken AI is Colonial Marines. No. Isolation had two AIs. Marines had the bad AI. Th this game had two different AIs that would talk to each other. And one of them is like... It was some weird thing where one of them always knows where you are and the other one doesn't know where you are and the, the smart one will give hints. Which is neat. Okay, yeah, shut up, Chad. I was right. The fuck out of here. <laughs> Blown out. Atmospheric, tense, faithful to its source material horror games ever made. Pac-Man did it years first. After its release, it's still better than most, if not all, of the crappy horror shovelware games you'll come across today. That's not a fair comparison. That's a sixty-dollar triple-A title. <laughs> Saying that it's better than chicken feet isn't... <laughs> and it didn't help that IGN gave Goat Simulator an 8 out of 10 Come on! Earlier. One of the most laughable criticisms the reviewer Bro, Goat makes Sim was how crazy he was in 2008. he was motionless and out of sight. Fright dissolved into frustration as I got killed from behind for the umpteenth time, even as I was crouched motionless and out of sight in an air duct. But leaves out the fact that he Whoa. was holding the motion sensor that alerts aliens to your position. Okay. Which the uh, game makes perfectly clear. And uh, it's just another case of IGN getting the completely wrong person I for guess the job. so. A mistake they also made with their review of 
Death Stranding. Bro, I when, when we first saw the trailer for this game and like the gameplay, I tweeted that I thought Kojima was a fucking hack. I thought this was his Waterloo. I was like, this game is going to be bad. And guess who was right? Fuck out of here, Kojima. I win. <laughs> I'm the real gamer. I fucking knew that game was going to suck, and it did. Which they gave a 6.8. Certainly. Although I hear people like it now. Years, like <laughs> people are doing the whole like, oh, it's misunderstood. Zelda Breath of the Wild and Red Dead Redemption. I don't get the Kojima dick writing. I think he did something truly innovative like 30 years ago. Genuinely. I think he did something amazing. And then I think he... How do I put it? He has good ideas. MGS2 hit the nail on the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Metal Gear Solid is amazing. The, 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 the first three Metal Gear Solid games are great. The fourth one came out at a time, I think, where it was a little... Like, it was starting to fall behind in terms of, like, innovation. Metal Gear Solid 5 is amazing, gameplay-wise. But the story just doesn't make any fucking sense. Stephen King Syndrome? Eh. I don't know. Is it? I thought Stephen King was still pretty respected. That guy writes, like, crazy. Like, 17 pages a day, right? Death Stranding is like the album's 90s band's release now. <laughs> That's funny, actually. Yeah, I like his old stuff. Who have managed I to like successfully that. trade the line, but people got to stop thinking everything is for them. Yeah, the rigidity yeah, that's of true. Realism and the exhilaration of point. pure escapism. Death Stranding possesses similarly lofty ambitions, inventive ideas, and a sprawling. I mean, at least he's innovative, map, right? Like this game's been different. On a backbone made of repetitive mission design and arduous traversal that simply can't support its weight over the full course of the journey. How do you guys feel about games that are supposed to be annoying, right? Like, I always think of No More Heroes when you're doing the chores. Depends. Lisa does it perfectly. What, like, Lisa, like, the JRPG game Lisa? My favorite game Lisa? I feel like Lisa isn't annoying, is it? I can't think of anything. I like it in Red Dead 2. The Rope? Yeah, but that's, like, one section. Right? Are you talking like Jump King? Well, that's what I'm saying is like at the one extreme end of the scale. It's like Jump King or getting over it, right? But it's pretty funny how this game is significantly cooler if you're on a silver server that people actually build on. Oh, there's servers? I know that there's the whole thing with the ladder that you can build for people, but... Lisa is literally a Western RPG. You know what I mean. It's JRP it was made an RPG maker. It's, it's, it's structured like a JRPG. This review apparently isn't for everyone. Perfectly balanced. Just as the game isn't for everyone. And it's definitely a game you have to be in the right mood and frame of mind to play. Which, if you are, there's no doubt you'll find the 6.8 score absolutely ridiculous. I guess and so. And even if the game's not for you, I'm sure you'd still be able to appreciate that Death Stranding is a truly unique AAA one-off experience uh... from one of gaming's living legends, Hideo Kojima. Oh, and lest we forget, in the very same month, oh, in the very He's same gamer year, filled. they gave Pokemon Sword and Shield a 9.3. <laughs> Three out of ten. All right, you know what? I get it. He's he's convincing me. He's making it hard. Okay, but he, he's kind of spinning. Wait a minute. Bob SquarePants. Wait a minute. Bikini, bottom rehydrated. How is it even possible to get fifty-one thousand dislikes on your review of a remake of a seventeen-year-old mediocre? I remember this SpongeBob being like shocking that they that rated PS2 this so low. Remember fondly. <gasps> Well, from what I can tell, his main problem like four, with the game right? is that it feels like a remake of a 17-year-old mediocre SpongeBob SquarePants platformer that PS2 kids remember fondly, and that it doesn't feel as good as the Crash and Spyro remakes. It's accompanied by some imaginative oh. improvements, but those few bright spots aren't enough to bring Battle for Bikini Bottom's passable but simplistic gameplay up to the standard of a 2020 platformer. Yeah. Let alone impressive recent remakes like the Spyro Reignited trilogy. All three playable characters, SpongeBob, Sandy, and this Patrick, song. have the same repetitive few lines of dialogue that they bleed out after finding collectibles, grabbing health, or hitting enemies. I feel like a new sponge. Oh, sparkly. I mean, I, this is just the old conversation of like, how do you rate remakes? Do you rate them against what they were then, and then like they just build the same thing, or do you build them as they are now? Right? I love opening presents. 
By the 30th time um. I heard them, I just wanted to stop playing. He then goes on to call the remake of a 17-year-old mediocre SpongeBob SquarePants platformer that PS2 kids... I hate it when people do this in YouTube videos. Like, when, when, when like, for emphasis, they have a really long sentence... And the point is, like, you repeat the whole thing. I hate it when people do that. I know the bit. I know what you're doing. I don't like it. It's like when a YouTuber does, like, a Christmas episode and they rhyme the whole time. Oh, my fucking God. Turn it off. Remember fondly, I hate it. <laughs> get this too kid-friendly. Can't Battle stand for it. Bikini Bottom is an incredibly easy platformer with only a few truly challenging sections thrown in. The difficulty jump in levels like SpongeBob's Dream is often fun, but there's such whiplash from the rest of the adventure. I mean, the and game when wasn't done, good. The challenge I played it, to being but it's like an old game. I would have loved it if I played it challenge. as a kid. Ultimately, it's us fun. gamers are always happy when a game from our childhood gets a good remake. No, we're which not. Which is what uh, Rehydrate it is. Okay, uh, it doesn't add any bells and whistles, gamers. but what did the reviewer expect them to do with Battle for Bikini Bottom? Add a Battle Royale mode? And the gamers that enjoyed I this game as kids, nice, who actually. probably just wanted to take a load off and rekindle their youth for a few hours, didn't appreciate another disinterested, monotone IGN review raining on their parade. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Uh, I don't know. He's singing the review. He's he is very gamer pilled. He's right. I just, I don't know. I I don't care. I just like if if I if a remake. I'm trying to think of a game that I love. Dude, okay, Banjo Kazooie, right? I love Banjo Kazooie. They came out with nuts and bolts. It's fucking bad. I was just like, oh, that sucks. Twisted Metal? They made a remake of that, and it wasn't great. They made Twisted Metal, but they took out all the characters. And I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. Oh, well, whatever. They rebooted SSX on the same system. They rooted, rebooted uh, SSX and Twisted Metal on PS3, and both of them were like, okay. I loved SSX, actually. That was an excellent game, I thought. But yeah, Twisted Metal wasn't great. Ever played the GoldenEye remake? Oh, the Wii one? No. Wait, no, I did. I played it online. That was crazy. The SSX reboot was good. It had, like, the wingsuit? No, that was great. That shit was sick. We need more Tony Hawk remakes. Did you guys hear about that? The Tony Hawk remake is, uh... They, they were working on 3 and 4, but Activision shut it down. <laughs> Isn't that insane? That's crazy. Twisted Metal's best feature was being able to swap the disc mid-game. I forgot about that. In Twisted Metal, you could literally, you load it into the match, and you would take that game out, and you would put it in your own disc, and then you would have to keep switching back and forth. I forgot about that. Oh, my God. That was so funny. I forgot about that. I used to do that with Korn. I used to listen to Korn. Like, Issues. Like, Freak on a Leash? <laughs> Bro, I load into the boss fight against Minion? Bro. My Mr. Grim went crazy. My Mr. Grim went crazy. <laughs> I think I played the cop. Oh, wait, no, I played Spectre. I played Spectre. That was my fucking guy, dude. Maybe a little bit of Grasshopper? I fucking love Twisted Metal so much. Oh. All right, what's number one, actually? I'm curious. It's got to be something people know, right? Cuphead? No. No. God Hand? Last of Us? Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh. It's okay. the big one. Sure. The Last of Us Part 2 yeah. is the most disliked IGM review of all time. Oh, did they say it was good and the gamers... I forget, dude, I forget. Did gamers hate it and the, the, the critics loved it? Or did the critics not like it and the gamers hated it? Because it could be both. Gamers hated it? Yeah, because Joel dies, right? And they get mad about that? I'm I remember and... both. I remember both realities are real in my head. You know what I mean? Nearly double that of our number two. Joel dies? Yeah, he, he dies to a person named Abby. There's a woman named Abby that kills him with a golf club. 
don't do this whole like spoilers thing. Yeah, you're not gonna play the game. Joel dies to a fucking and, and, and is a person with a golf club, and then uh, what if my viewers drop like five hundred? No, she kills Joel with a golf club with her gang, and then you play as Ellie, and then you play the second half as Abby, and it turns out that her dad is a scientist that you killed in the first Last of Us game. And the whole point of the whole game is that throughout the game, Joel keeps trying to teach Ellie how to play guitar, right? He keeps trying to teach her, and that's the thing that he tries to pass down to her. And then he dies. And then Ellie, in the final confrontation with Abby, Abby bites her fingers off, and she can't play guitar anymore. And that's actually a pretty cool story. Th <laughs> I don't know if somebody tried to, like, fucking <laughs> mind freak me. Like, oh! <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> I undo spoilers. I think it's a pretty si I think the finger thing is actually a pretty sick um I think that's a cool story uh I, what do I put it beat I think that's really cool psychic blast I think that's a very cool narrative yeah the game was amazing <laughs> I got to the second half of the game and I got bored I was like this is too slow I think it's a story told well. I think it's just too slow. The first Last of Us is a basic story told very well, just in terms of, like, basic structure. The second game is, like, uh, you know. People were mad because she gave up her life, finally found Abby, then let her go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Because, like, at the end of the game, she decides not to kill Abby, which is, like, fine, right? I get why people are mad, especially after she kills Joel. But... You're not supposed to agree with the decision of the character, I don't think. I understand why people are mad. But, like, I also think that there are probably people that didn't want to kill all the scientists in the first game. I think it just so happened that gamers agreed that Joel was right in the first game about killing the scientists. But a lot of people probably played that and they were like, oh, I, di I didn't like that he did that. But it's not about you, the gamer, it's about the character. The character's making a choice. You get what I'm saying? And if you want to be yeah. mad about that, that's fine, but it's Gamers like... Gamers need to learn to stew is my main takeaway. That's all. And and I, I'm not a fan of Last of Us 2, but I do think people were kind of childish about it, but... That's my feeling on it. Games, I whopping... I think Stu was STFU. That's what it was. 91,000 yeah. dislikes. Spoiler Yeesh. alert. Covering the build-up and leaks and the controversy around this game is another video. They also just hated the girl. Oh yeah, they hated Abby. <laughs> they did hate Abby. I remember that. Video entirely. They did not like Abby one bit. the main kick in the balls. The first game is one of the most loved and critically acclaimed games of all- Dude, I remember people being really weird about Abby. She was just like a really physically fit woman. And people were like, oh my god, she looks like a guy. She's so manly. It's like, not really. She's just like- she has broad shoulders. Like she, she looks like an a the average softball player. Like she's muscular, you know. It's fucking, you know. All time is weird. No question. Not. Just I thought that was Aloy, dude. I don't know why people thought Aloy was so ugly. I think Aloy's pretty. I think Aloy's pretty. I I think she has shots where she looks goofy. Right. I think Aloy looks weird in some shots, but like that's gaming, right? I think Aloy's pretty. Who? The fucking Aloy from uh from Horizon Zero Dawn. She got kind of like chipmunk cheeks, right? But you know, it's great. I think she's gameplay, cute. But for its storytelling, dialogue, and the relationship that develops between the two main characters, Joel and Ellie. What game? Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Hold on. So this is the main character of the Horizon Zero Dawn series. Her name is Aloy. She is a redhead ginger, whatever, uh, from the past or something. She's, spoilers, the, actually I won't spoil this one because that would be uncalled for. But basically she's, she looks like this and she, I think she's pretty. Yeah. But people are like, oh my God, she's hideous. She's so ugly. Look at her. Because I think she has like rosacea or something. Maybe she's just dirty. I don't know. She's from a hunter gatherer society. In some of the clips she looks silly, right? But you know, I think she's pretty. And as the credits rolled on the first game, the seven. No, I mean, keep in mind, she's from like a fucking caveman society, right? Long wait for the sequel began. Then about a month. Not this one, but Last of Us is okay to spoil. No, no, no. He's talking about Last of Us. Nobody was talking about Horizon Zero Dawn. If I spoiled that one, that one's just coming out of left field. 
That one would just be wild. It's not a crazy spoiler or anything, but you know, it, it, already you're locked in on this one. Prior to The Last of Us 2, she should actually look worse. Yeah, probably. Whose release Being a fucking came cave, the leaks, you know, tribal society. With one leak towering above the rest. The leak was a cutscene of Joel, the main character from The Last of Us, getting his head caved in by an athletic woman with a golf club. I told you! To say All right, well, wait games. a minute. She does look really buff here. <laughs> I think it's the rippling of the muscles. That is the cut. She does look kind of buff there. Head caved in by an athletic <laughs> woman with a golf club. Needless Good for her. Say, Sheesh. Fans of the series were stunned. Not only did they have to deal with the main character. She also just has a jacket on. Yeah, probably just layered up. Favorite game getting killed off. It's a big jacket. Continue playing the game as the random chick that killed him. And so when IGN said this. But while part two is a thrilling adventure, it still makes time for a stunning, nuanced exploration of the strength and fragility of the human spirit. The PlayStation 4 has one of its finest exclusives in one of the generation's best games. <laughs> Personally, I only liked the first game. I mean, it was brilliant. Don't get me wrong. No, no politics. <laughs> Wouldn't that be ironic? But once no I politics it, I in my games. Feel the need to ever play it again. We're not talking. About yeah, definitely didn't deserve a ten. About beautiful no. Joe here. <laughs> Let's be real. And whether or not The Last of Us Part Two deserves to be the I main hate politics focus in my games. That's why I love Bioshock. IGN bro. review it's of my all favorite time game. is up for debate. Ew. But what's not up for debate is that IGN continue to be the worst source of video game reviews on the internet. I will say, the opening of this game is kind of obnoxious. I the opening of this game is is a little annoying. Like, the bigot sandwich line and, like, the whole... It, it got a little, like... Okay, man, I get it. Like, it... It's a little annoying. And long... I get what you're doing, you know? Like, in... Eh, but. A rain. Thank you all for watching. I've been the Tominator. Subscribe. <laughs> the Terminator? Uh, oh, the Tominator. Okay, that's good. Big fan, bro. I love this channel. I'm subscribed, bro. I gotta <laughs> I gotta find out more. Bro, this video's popping off. This video going a bit stupid. What does only one here think? That's a great question. I don't know what he thought about last of us. I'm sure it was a zero. Let's see what he's been up to. Dakar Desert Rally is a five. What? It has a car. It's forty dollars. There's multiplayer. <laughs> But only four players. Plague Tale Zero. Huge steaming pile of garbage. NHL. Garbage. The exact same garbage, actually. Also bad multiplayer. Valkyrie Elysium. Steaming pile of garbage. No Man's Sky. Garbage. Steaming pile of garbage. <laughs> it's always steaming. The only one here VOD is up on Coney VODs. Oh, did it go up finally? Hell yeah. Thank God. So many garbages. Hold on. The word garbage appears nine times, which is actually way less than I think. I would think more, but how many reviews are there per page? Probably ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you would think it was once per review and he missed it one time, but no, he drops it twice when talking about NHL. So that game's extra bad. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Maybe it doesn't work if you don't expand. Let's see how this site is coded. Let's run it again. 11. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. One per review. Every. Never mind. Overwatch 2 is double garbage too. There it is. Oh, Lego is not. Wait, so that means one has... Oh, Splatoon, there are three twos. There are three double garbage. Got it, okay. <laughs> sure, 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 that makes sense. You know what else makes sense? Having delicious meals delivered straight to your door. Guys, give me a few minutes, okay? It'll be fast and then we get back to the movies. Okay? It's not a bounty. It's not a bounty. Listen, it's only going to take a minute. But I can't wait to tell you about Green Chef. That's right. Green Chef. Yes. The meal delivery system made for 
for you! That's right, exclamation point Green Chef in the chat for more info. So if you're wondering what Green Chef is, they send great prepared Whoa. meals right to you. D d I gotta cut these. Let me reload those. Chat's gonna die. Just for you! Now, if you're wondering what I have in my box, I got this today. We're gonna go ahead and unbox it and see what we have. Now, every I, I chose to order three meals, okay? You don't, you could go anywhere you could get all week if you want. Seven meals, you could get just one a week. Whatever you want. But it's really nice to have it conveniently delivered to you. But you still get to make it. So it's not like fast food. You get that personal touch. It's delicious. I got the refried bean and pepper stuffed tortillas. The Turkish spice tick chicken tacos. And also the barramundi with chipotle lime aioli. Which I didn't know barramundi was a fish. I didn't know barramundi was a fish. So I probably won't be eating that because I, I hate fish. But now I know. And I'm broadening horizons with Green Chef. So the way that they do it is they send it in a package like this, and everything is in here, okay? It's all in there, and then you just cook it up. The meals could take anywhere from, like, 20 to 30 minutes. Some of them take 45, but some of them could take 10. It's very convenient. It's great. And then if you're saying, Coney, what's going to happen? My meat is going to spoil. Guess what, dummy? They have it at the bottom. See? There's the chicken. Delicious. It's at the bottom with the ice, along with the barramundi which I found out was a fish because there's a fish on the label. <laughs> I did not know that. There's a fish on the label, so there you go. Now, if you're saying, Cody, I know you love Green Chef, but why Green Chef over other options? Well, it's simple, silly. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. There are dinners that work for you, not the other way around. Options for every lifestyle, like keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, gluten-free, plant-based, calorie conscious, or if you just want balanced dishes, Green Chef is right for you. And it's delivered right to you, so you don't even have to worry about figuring out what you're going to make every night. You can just pick some stuff, pick three options, and then you have three meals for the night. They can serve one or two. It's delicious. Did I say carnivore? Or cannibals. The chat's saying cannibals. I didn't say that, right? Okay. My diet is endangered animals. I d maybe they're working on it. I don't... I don't... I haven't seen that meal yet. If you're eating, like, bald eagles. I saw cannibals and I said... Th did I say cannibals? Oh, I'm asking if cannibals is one of the options. I was like, did I say that? Oh, my God. There's more variety and flexibility than ever before. With more options and more flavors. There are 30 weekly recipes to choose from, which is way more than other sites. And there's more variety than ever. And if you want to try out Green Chef, guess what? I have a deal for you. Hit exclamation point Green Chef right now, and there's a link that's going to pop up right here. And use that code, pogcony135, and you'll get $135. It's true, $135 off across five Green Chef boxes, including free shipping. You'll be a dummy not to take it. Free meals delivered right to your door. Check out Green Chef. Oh, well, they're not free meals. You're getting them for cheap, but they're free over time because they add up. I have to be very clear because this is a sponsorship. They're not free, okay? <laughs> they're eventually free if you pay for them, okay? Don't, they'll, they'll be free over time with the money you save, okay? It's worth it. It's not free. It's not free. <laughs> it's not free, you guys. It'll be free over time. Okay, check out Green Chef, exclamation point from Green Chef in the chat, and try it out for yourself. Who knows? Maybe you'll be hooked. Thanks, Green Chef, for sponsoring the stream. They're going to send me more later, and I'm going to unbox it next week. Uh, they also have 10-minute lunches now on the menu e each week, which is kind of nice because I never have time, so that's good. Okay. Back to business. I don't want to do a cooking stream because I've made Green Chef and uh, HelloFresh meals before, and I always mess it up. It's it's bad. Also, uh, I should have said that before. Yeah, so they are uh, they're affiliated with HelloFresh. I don't know if they're owned by it or something like that. So if you're familiar with HelloFresh, it's like that they're with the delivery right to you, but also you know they've got more conscious options. It's great. They're owned. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. Also, guess what? If you if you do it, I get money. 
Wow, isn't that nice? <laughs> Good for me. Thanks, Broken Cake. Okay. You know what else is free? Clicking the subscribe button on Twitch. Just clicking it. <laughs> not, not, f not going all the way through. Just clicking on the button and then closing it. That is free to do. That's a good point. Gameplay, you say? Hmm. You could see gameplay. Or... We could watch the top. <laughs> that, I, that that wasn't supposed to happen. The top ten roller coaster jump scares from Theme Park Crazy. Ah! Ah! <laughs> okay, listen. I wanted to I wanted to do uh, gameplay tonight, but I realized that it's puppet combo, and I have to stay brand safe, and I don't know what's in the game. <laughs> I'm a little scared. Puppet combo could go kind of crazy. So I think... We <laughs> I wanted to do it, but I feel like puppet combo probably is something that's not brand, brand safe. You get what I'm saying? I genuinely wanted to do it. Tomorrow, I promise. Puppet combo tomorrow. Shake. Shake. I mean it. I mean it. For real. For real. Thank you. Yeah. We do puppet combo tomorrow. This motherfucker's a liar. No, I'm not! Dude, hold on. Let me show you the games that I just bought. Just so you don't know. I don't know why I'm on Putt-Putt. Uh, hold on. What games did I just buy? You're going to look so foolish. I bought Wonderful 101. I just bought Faith. I have Stay Out of the House. And I also have... Wait. Somebody gave me this gift. I think it was Ritzler. Thank you for the upturn. I have Paratropic, Paratopic, which Ecompton recommended. It's a good, scary game that takes like 30 minutes. Dude, do you see that? I have so many games. See? And then I also have, if we run out, Night at the Gates of Hell, which is made by the guy that made, or the team that made Bloodwash. And now you can see why I can't fucking play Bloodwash on stream. <laughs> do you understand now? Do you see that? We're going to leave that alone. And instead, we're going to watch the top 10 roller coaster jump scares. Frog Fractions? Oh, yeah. I got that because I've never played it. And I heard it was like Baldi. It's not scary, but I've always wanted to try it. I was curious. <laughs> I watched the Blood Wash VOD. It's very scary. I played like 10 minutes of Visage, too. Also, somebody gifted me Puzzle Game for Kids. Which, maybe I'll try sometime. Okay. Anyway, tomorrow... What was that? <gasps> a new Green Chef subscription. Who was it? That's one out of a hundred. Who did it? It doesn't say their name. Congratulations. You just got $135 off across five boxes. And I made a little money too. We both win. Okay. Top 10 roller coaster jump scares. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Actual uh-oh. <laughs> Oh God! Lights and colors. Please know this list will contain spoilers for each ride. You can spoilers. You can find a ride list for in roller the coasters. <laughs> I guess You've so. You've heard of jump scares in video games. I have. Believe it or not, there can be jump scares on roller coasters too. Very These scary. These moments are specifically designed to startle riders. That's the with Hulk. An unexpected twist when it shoots? at some point in the ride. It's so the, with the Halloween deal. season in full swing. Here are the top ten roller coaster jump scares. As wait, you go down the hill. You think you go up and you're like, oh, this rules. I wonder how we get back down. Maybe we just go backwards slowly. <laughs> no! <laughs> Voted on by the fans. Number ten: the Scarecrow and the launch at Flucht von Novgorod at Germany's Hansa Park. A Scarecrow, built by German manufacturer Gerslauer, this attraction is a pitch-perfect hybrid of a dark ride and a roller coaster. Okay. First opening in 2009, this ride has intricate storytelling with a fantasy horror theme. The coaster's cool. layout starts off with a dark ride section featuring visual effects and animatronics. All of a sudden and out of nowhere, the train takes a sudden drop down in the dark heading straight into a launch section. Okay. The sudden appearance of the launch, combined with the added momentum from the drop, is said to make this one of the most intense launches on Earth. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. 
I kind of like that because it drops into a launch. Taking guests Bro, to that around that seems kind of scary. Miles per hour in just one point four seconds. But the, I, I thought guests it'd be a jump scare. I didn't see a jump scare. <laughs> I thought it'd be like a inside. yeah, a sudden so drop is not a jump train scare. Will reach the final break run. But the thrills don't end there, because all of a sudden, a scarecrow drops down from the ceiling to startle the passenger. Ah! It's a simple effect, but the fact that it occurs on the final break run undoubtedly makes it a heart-pounding surprise. I guess to so. To put it bluntly, this coaster looks fantastic. <laughs> and spoiler alert, it won't be the last Hansa Park coaster on this list. Okay. Number 9, the Nebula Ghost on Space... Maybe this is a bad video idea. Space Mountain Ghost <laughs> Galaxy. I thought, I thought there'd be actual jump scares. California's Disneyland. And a paranormal sci-fi uh. overlay on their classic space mountain coaster. The ride has an unsettling start with an ascent up the lift hill. Give it till eight. Me- I'll give it till eight. Music. At this isn't of- as fun as I thought. Yeah. The, lift, the portal to space <laughs> takes agree. shape, but so does the main antagonist. This of the one might ride. be a skip. A hostile skeletal space creature Ew. known as Bob by Disney cast members begins to take shape, Ew. shooting bolts oh my of God. plasma at guests. Throughout the ride, guests are stalked and chased by Bob dodging stars and asteroids in a desperate escape route. Oh, that's Eventually, terrifying. Eventually, riders reach the portal back to the station, but they are far from out of the woods, because Bob shows up one more time with a rather infamous jump scare, <laughs> popping out just before the final turn into the unboarding zone. Very scary, Number eight, yeah. The launch hill on the... This is not a fucking jump scare. Okay, this is a bad idea. We're going to one. This is not a jump scare. You see it happening. You see it happen. And you hear people yell. What's number one? Number one, any drop track on any roller coaster. What? Coaster. The viewers agree. This ride element is the most shocking, scream-inducing, and jump scariest moment you can find on a roller coaster. I guess. This element is basically a dead end straight section of track that the train. Co- he fell off, bro. <laughs> the streets didn't like this one. The streets aren't into this one. But you know what? It's okay, because we got other movies ready. But guess what? New Crobe Cat upload. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Crobe Cat is back. I actually, I don't, this one made me sad. I have no attachment to Halo at all. So I actually, this is a big deal to me. I want to see this one. It's Halo. I have no attachment to Halo. I'm curious. What happened? You ever wonder what's up there? What's wrong with Halo? This video is incredible. I heard Halo is is like the most mishandled franchise ever, right? Because like it was such a big deal way back when, you know, back in back in the the Halo 1, Halo 2. I mean, I'm going to keep it $100. I just think Halo was never great. Uh, I don't know. I really don't. I think Halo felt really good because they were the first. What makes you feel that way? I'm. Thank you for being reasonable. I feel like Halo was the first series to really master the whole like the AI feeling. You know what I mean? Like the enemies coming out of the, the... The enemies working against you, standing behind cover, all that stuff. And that that first, like, third-person campaign. Or first-person campaign. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they really mastered that to a level nobody else did with that level of polish. And then it just kind of, you know... They were first to market, but they didn't... It wasn't that crazy. I think it's just nostalgia. I think it's straight-up nostalgia. I don't think Halo was ever amazing. Even when I played it when I was young, I was like, this is kind of fun, but, like, it's not, you know. At the time, it was better than anything else. Now it still holds up, which is remarkable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it It's still fun, but it's, like, kind of fun. Right? How do you make Halo Infinite fun? It's Halo. You know what Halo is. Seriously. Halo multiplayer was revolutionary. Yes, you're you're right. But for the time, now it's not I I just don't I I you know, I don't know why it's important now. The social aspect was a big thing for the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, don't get me wrong, like 
the things surrounding the game are good. The game itself is like, eh. Right? But let's watch the video. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm just not a Halo guy. I'm just trying to give you full context, okay? Full transparency. Maybe someone out there was wondering what it's like here. I guess. Do you think we'll meet them? I hope so. Grove ha Cat hates video games. All of his fucking movies are just about shitty franchises. The correct answer to the question, who is the worst game developer, is 343 Industries. <laughs> Jeez! Man, what a time to be a Halo fan. The horrible choices that they've made by coming out and literally saying, hey, we, you know, we did something different here, guys. We hired people that hated Halo to make Halo. Oh. Hey, I mean, split screen be damned, who cares? They'll forge and launch. Okay, split screen in 2023, do we need that? I don't know if you... I think gamers are just raging on that. Do you need split screen? Do people still do that? I think people are being weird champ. I think that's weird champ. Hold up. Did you just say Forge I get hey. because I don't even know what Forge is. But it, it a lot enough people have told me it's important that I think it's important. No, Forge, Forge is a big deal. Okay. So many things. Why else would you play Halo? Because I have... Everybody has a console. We all play online now. You don't need split screen. Why do you need local? I don't need local. Bro, people hop on Discord now. Fortnite. Things. You ever hear of Fortnite? Missing from previous Halos. It's as if the team forgot what works. No co-op campaign at launch. Okay, that's bad. No co-op campaign is broken. bad. You can't even watch feeder mode. Ooh. It's broken. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's the Hazop armor set from Halo Reach. Unfortunately, I can't earn it in Halo Infinite. I have have to pay twenty dollars. Yeah, the skins were crazy. I will give that up too. Fortnite has split screen. No fucking way. You've got to be kidding me. There's no fucking way. Right, and change any it's, it's very to he cannot jump the only way it's all right, and that's it, guys. And that's how you do it, all right. But anyway, guys, kind of look at why turn on that notification, bro. King Alex HD has the game locked up. <laughs> Anybody asking that question? He every time there's a new chapter. <laughs> My boy King Alex got a video out getting 18,000 views. <laughs> Listen, it doesn't look good, but it does exist. And for that, that's me. That's me. I've been blown the fuck out. I've been Ronnie'd. This looks terrible. Yeah, the fact that, like, the faces are there, I think it's because, like, it's split screen and HD. It's like, you know what I mean? You can't just have the characters. Like, you got to have something to fill that spot, but damn. There's no way they're going to sell us the classic red color for $7. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind over this game. The promise of live service games and the we'll finish it later mentality. Are you out of your mind? Is that Angry Joe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he sure is. What's that guy's name again? Huh? Going backwards, guys. We're, we're going, going backwards. backwards. Yeah, that it's rated T. I thought we were gonna get a flood with turn. I guess that's just backwards. Yeah, that it's rated. Pissed Pablo, <laughs> agitated Andre. I don't know why that's so funny to me. Peeved Pedro. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny. It's so stupid. But I, you know what, I I get why people get mad about shit not coming out. Dude, I can't believe Overwatch 2 had no PvE. That was the whole point. That's mind. crazy. We're going backwards, guys. We're, we're going, going backwards. backwards. Yeah, that it's rated T. I thought we were going to get a flood with turn. Oh, it's I T? I guess that's just not going to happen now. You cannot let a team <laughs> toil and mess around <laughs> and goof off with your flagship IP for almost a decade. <laughs> it's 
just one thing after another, after another with this company. Uh... I think the fundamental difference between the Bungie and 343 is, is the, the way that they were formed. 343 was brought in to work on an existing franchise, uh -huh. an existing universe with an existing fan base on existing hardware. Well, we feel really good about our, our Studio 343. There's my fucking guy. I love Phil. Always smugly smiling. That's my dude. That's working Philly, on yes. Halo today. The go. Can't wait to see him in E3, bro. Rare opportunities when he still looks so smug. I think it's the chest out. I really do. You can build a team of people that are uniquely passionate about Halo. Bad movie, fucking complaining ass. I will say, Crobcat has made some movies that I'm like, dude, you don't need to like. I don't know which ones off the top of my head, but some of them seem like like needless bitching. It might have been the Dark Souls one. I think the Dark Souls one seems stupid. The Back for Blood video? Ah, the Back for Blood video kind of got... I was like, eh. That one's kind of spitting. I mean, I didn't like Back for Blood, but, like, you know. The TF2 one? Yeah, the TF2 one is stupid. It's like, it, come on, man. Many of these people grew up playing Halo. That's com probably completely unique, right? Is every single person there their destination was Halo rather than a job. You are on the cover of the new Bloomberg Have you seen Business this? Week Look here. Look at that. Oh. The real Master Chief. Master Chief is human. He's not a machine. He's not a set of armor with a big weapon. He's a human. Wait, was that not supposed to be the case? I don't know the lore. Is Master Chief supposed to be, like, was he ever... He's always been human. He's just a dude. Okay. With resilience. It's a chance for people who have played as chief for so long. It's just the big question, like man versus machine. Oh, that's kind of neat. Like at the core of it. Okay. To put the controller down, sit back on He's the like couch, Doom Marine. Okay. enjoy the experience of learning about the chief in a way that you have never done before. Okay, I don't like, like and seeing Star Wars. Him. Halo is a universe where hundreds of stories can be Thank told you shark slippers. and where millions of experiences name. can be shared. We knew we wanted He's to like expand the, the audience as far as ah, we could, okay. but still satisfy the core as much as possible. Halo 4's loadout system uh, frequently and sort of appropriately gets compared to other FPS games, including Call of Duty and others, and, uh, and that's a reasonable sort of uh, comparison. Yeah, I think Halo 5 uh, is one of, if not the best, multiplayer versions of Halo. Jump up in the air and I turn my stabilizers on, the jets kick in. You can go back forward Ooh. all directions. We're not really limiting these that things. That should look actually like Titanfall. You, you actually can mount on top of edges throughout the world. Would be adding... See, the problem... Uh, uh, the it. thing you is, Halo movement, like, doesn't look Back cool forward, all, because it just looks like... At the end of the day, you're just really fucking... Like, limit. the time to kill in Halo is just fucking... <laughs> You know what I mean? It, you're not outmaneuvering people in Halo, I don't think. Halo feels very, uh, how do I put it? Um, Halo feels, vi yes you are? I, I don't, reaction based? No, Halo feels like I'm playing with action figures. Arcadey, extremely. When I, when I play Halo, I feel like I'm playing with two dolls and I'm like, ah, gotcha, no, run away. Like that, you know what I mean? It feels very stiff. I don't know how to put it. It's way less twitchy. Yeah, maybe. And I'm not saying it's bad. You know, it's fun that way, but it doesn't... I, I don't feel like... Uh, that's just, like... Like, it's Halo. How do you... How do you fucking... How do you iterate on Halo? These things are actually allowing you to change it. You actually can mount on top of edges throughout the world. Would be adding another clamber route. Halo has always been synonymous with online competition. With Halo 5 Guardians, we are fully... I think MK is more like playing with action figures. Oh, that's true. Hell yeah. Embracing that legacy. Mortal Kombat is just like a 40-year-old dad playing with action figures from when he was a kid. Oh, Terminator! I guess Robocop! Blah, 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 blah. The, with the biggest just fucking dad in got his toy box back. History. You know, making the decision to remove split screen was a really tough one um, for everyone here at 343. Yeah, there's no flood in the game. Yeah, we're not dealing with the flood uh, in this one. We got uh, other surprises in store. Oh, you're opening up a pack. Animating. Someone makes out of it. <laughs> Mongoose, Needler, Ghost, Fuel Rod Cannon. Yes. All the details are I love in. it. This is the first time? Yes. Oh, yeah. You're really hoping it doesn't crash, right? Damn, that's a fat, fat pack. pack. We've also had a lot of learnings along the way. You know, when 
we fell down with the multiplayer launch of MCC. Damn, fell down. It's been 20 minutes of searching. Nothing. What? Not a single match. Really? Welcome to the Master Chief Collection, where you get a black screen of death every five seconds, and then you spend your time just sitting here waiting. Master There's Chief Collection was rough. Title on this really? Entire disc that's working to form right now. Not a single title. Dude, that doesn't feel that hard. Am I stupid? If you're gonna remake an old game, I guess it's all in the details of like the network, right? It took five years to get right. Jesus. That's the 343 guarantee. Is when they release a game, the shit is gonna suck and it's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> Gamers. I've been sitting here for 40 minutes. What? You can't do it! <laughs> is this the same guy as before? I thought that was the guy that was just standing on stage. Wait a minute. Oh, it's not. <laughs> what the? Hey! <laughs> you made the game! Fix it! Hey, you did that! Why are you complaining? <laughs> it's his brother that works at Bungie. He's just a white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a white guy with that haircut, to be fair. He has the haircut. You can't do it! You can't play a match! 343 three didn't earn this. That's why they don't care about it. They didn't earn this. Resolving the current matchmaking issues in Halo The Master Chief Collection uh. remains our top priority. Why can't I get a match? It's been a week later. And this game still ain't fucking working, bro. <laughs> we know that some players are still seeing issues in game and we're committed to improving the experience with additional content updates in the near future. Cool. I don't know why, but I think that they made it worse. I bought an Xbox One just to play Halo. <laughs> That's the only game they have. And I've had yeah. the worst time with it. It was incredibly um, crushing to let the fans down. It was supposed to be a love letter to the fans. Yeah. Uh -huh. And depressed. Um, you know, we let them down. <laughs> Can we reveal anything literally about by the a next computer? Halo FPS title today? I think I think only honestly, I don't blame him. I think Halo scratches an itch like nothing else. Right? I think Halo is the only thing that feels like Halo. So if you have that itch, you're fucked. <laughs> I've had that Twisted Metal itch for like a decade, bro. I'm never getting that scratched. Ever. Only thing that that we'll joint is just numb to me. Confirm as we do listen split to gate? Fans, uh, yeah. There will I guess so. be split screen. Right. So. Uh, Halo Infinite multiplayer will be free to play. And invite more of you than ever. My itch is Midnight Club. Oh, I get that. Yeah. Or like Burnout. Apparently the new Need for Speed is made by Criterion, who are the people that made Burnout. I hope it's good. Midnight Club rules. Before to become a Spartan hero. The Slipspace engine is really this labor of love for 343. We've invested heavily. It's going to be the foundation of our next 10 years of Halo experiences. And that uh, trailer that we did. I have to dip. This video makes me too sad to watch. That's okay, but just drop your We're prime very on the way competitive out, game. That's our DNA. That's who we are. Drop that prime. I see that thing next to your name. Just go ahead. Halo, right? Give it up. I mean, it's it is a highly competitive game. Competition is I actually don't know how that crown icon works. I just assume that people have it and I'm like hand it over. Core <laughs> to uh, to Halo. Will there be playable elites in Halo Infinite? Uh, no, we're not currently planning on supporting elites as a, as a playable character. And the reason is, you know, this is a Spartan story. So we focus on how Spartans battle against each other. I don't know what elites And are. that it feels fair and it's competitive. We Thanks have a dad kisser decision not to ship campaign split screen co op. Folks have asked us, are they in? Are they out? Oh, What's the aliens? Oh, like the arbiter? Ah, okay. What's going on with assassinations? So, what's what's the scoop there? So they're not in for launch, and I think we're just going to be straight about it. What the fuck? <laughs> he, he's got a ponytail on both sides. Straight about that, right? Is there a plan to bring back dual wielding in Halo Infinite? Currently, no. That's that's not in the cards right now. Ooh. We want to share the exciting news that we got the official confirmation that Halo Infinite has gone gold. Let's go. Hooray! We made the really tough decision to delay shipping campaign co-op for launch and we also made the tough call to delay shipping forge 
past launch. Dude. Dude, campaign co-op is the one thing that I think rules for, for Halo. That's the one thing that I get excited about. As well. And as developers, when you work... Are there, are there good things that happened? Genuinely. Were there cool things that came out too? It's like, oh, this is a cool idea. You know what I mean? Surely there's something, right? There were cool things that got announced that he's not included. Grappling hook. <laughs> game. Okay. You want to get that game out there. And that almost seems okay. like, for us, that's the finish line. The campaign line. was very fun. Okay. But in reality... It's going to be the starting line. None of us inside of 343 look at this roadmap and are happy with it. Two seasons a year doesn't The cut PvP it. was fun and it was free. It. That's a good point. I forgot about that. That's, That's not true. That's what our true. players deserve. It's not what they expect. It's not what our team wants to do. It's not what I want to do. There's just been a lot of introspective time to really reflect on. <laughs> oh, no. There's been a lot of Master Chief is so sad. Time to really reflect. <laughs> Master Chief. My game! He got all dressed up. Master Chief, no! Reflect on, like, what have we done as 343? Um, where have we made mistakes? Where have we hit it right? And then what does Halo mean to all of us? Oh. And then also I would just say, don't sweat the mistakes. Um, because I would oh, say yeah. that every failure point has probably been um, an opportunity versus really a failure. Ah, it's one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. We're learn champing. I think the coolest thing about uh, about Bungie, though, one of our best traditions, is that everybody here really cares about what they're doing, and, and it's important to them. They, they do it well, and it's what makes them happy. Hey, everybody. So I'm Jason. I'm one of the co-founders of Bungie and the lead oh. on Halo. Microsoft estimated that they have sold one million copies oh, of Halo. Oh, man. Now Halo. I'm sad. Of Xbox owners are also Halo players. I know this one game on everybody's mind right now. Well, fellas, November the 9th. I'm not even a Halo guy, and this is sad. This game was huge. Biggest video game launches in history. Oh, man. Dude. Oh, wow. Do people know how huge Halo was? I feel like people don't. Right? Like, Zoomers now? Like, Fortnite kids? Like... Yes? Not really, right? Like, if you were born in, like, 2000, millennials do. Proximity voice. You can get close to somebody in a game and talk to them, and only that person can hear you. Oh, I didn't know they started proximity voice. That rules. I will say, I get the same magic watching Tyler play Overwatch. If I could go back and restart my stream and do it all again, I would shit talk in Overwatch. <laughs> that is so fun. I love that. I love listening to him shit talk in team chat. I love doing that too, so much. And I, Halo is the same way. The problem is you can't shit talk the other team. Their Marathon you know? series, so maybe there's hope. My friend, uh, I have a really good friend that loves Marathon. It's like his favorite series, so. We didn't even know how big Halo was going to get. How, Copium? <laughs> how can anything be bigger than Halo? Actually, Peter, uh, as we walk off stage, I think there's something to be fun to show these people. Uh... This is the way the world ends. Seven, Jesus. Man. Oh, the gamer drink. <laughs> this is the end Spike of the TV. This is going to be the end of the story. Oh, man. This is going to be the end of the story. Do you guys. This guy has the worst last name you could ask for. Can you guess what it is? Oh, what a gross name. That's such a gross name. Ew. <laughs> Curtis Kramer. 
ew. <laughs> so could be worse. I I mean I guess it could be a slur. Yeah. It could, like, I, that's the only thing I think could be worse is if your last name like offended people. You know, like I. I <laughs> that's the only thing that could be worse. I think creamer's pretty bad. Comer. <laughs> I mean, there's Alan Cummings, you know? What slur? Nice try. Not falling for that again. Bim bam once. I'm not going back. <laughs> Safe Home and Forge, I think, represent the coolest features that we have in Halo 3. This is the stuff that's going to keep people <laughs> playing for years on end, make a billion hours, get on the Xbox Live. <laughs> you know what I think of when I see this shit? Do people still dick around like this? I, I, I had Here's a tweet about, like, skill-based matchmaking. Uh, I, had a, I had a tweet about, um, people do. People still dick around like this in other games. Okay, that's fine. That's good, then. I had a tweet about skill-based matchmaking, and it got a little weird. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean to insert myself in the conversation. People take that conversation very seriously. I just said that I think it's kind of, you know, annoying, but, like, you know, I'm just one guy who gives a shit. Uh, but I... <laughs> I, I I had some really strange replies. That was a good tweet. I mean, like, people disagree with me, which is whatever. It's a video game. I, I, I think skill-based matchmaking is a little too tight, but who gives a shit, you know? It's not... I don't really care. But I got replies like this. <laughs> when privilege is taken away, equality feels like a... Pri what the fuck? Why are we politics posting? What? <laughs> huh? I got a couple of those. I got a couple really unhinged replies, right? Um, I, and, you know, I, the reason that I bring this up is because, like, there's an image that floats around a lot. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, this one. Which... I kind of laughed off at the time. But I think it's starting to become, like, at least for me, this is my life, okay? You guys know this one? So back in the dedicated server, everybody kind of finds their own server. When you put everybody into matchmaking, you don't really have moments like this, I don't think. <laughs> like, where people are just like, all right, fuck it, everybody jump in the car. <laughs> everybody jump in the car. I feel like matchmaking and competition. And I think that's, like, the reason that I bring this up is because when I see shit like this skill-based matchmaking discussion, it feels like these games are setting it up so that you have to compete. You know what I mean? I feel like the games push you to that matchmaking server. They really want you to be ranked. They want you to climb. Which I think was very appealing years ago, but I kind of want to get away from that now. But maybe that's just me. Competition addiction is hard to break. I just, I feel like uh, you say that, but a lot of it is keeping noobs from getting shit stomped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I get that. I do. And skill-based mat, like, I, I, if people disagree, it's whatever. I don't spend time in those worlds. I think I can say definitively skill-based matchmaking in League should be fucking loosened because I have an account from 2012 that still gets pitted up against mid-diamonds. And unranked. And I'm like, what the fuck? I have to keep buying accounts. I get that, okay? I can't talk about COD. I can't talk about, you know, Halo is separate matchmaking playlist and fuck around playlist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't talk about specific games. Coney, you're still better than other people. Yeah, that's fine, but I shouldn't be mid-diamond. Put me in low plat. You know what I'm saying? I, ju I, I think it's fine to exist, but it needs to loosen up. I can't talk about other games. The reason that I bring it up is because I think that there's this, like, games are, like, fully presenting themselves as, like, this is this is something. I, I, I would hesitate. No, this is stupid. I was going to say, like, part of me wonders if there's an element of, like, super copium. Where they show you a new game and they're like, yeah, this has matchmaking. And they and, and there's this distinct possibility that if you're really good at this game, you could change your life. Like, Multiverses comes out. A $100,000 prize. 
it's all ma- if you're good at this game and you do the matchmaking, your life could change. You could win a life changing amount of money. Right? Same with a lot of games that come out. It's like th- this this matchmaking offers a promise that if you're just naturally good at this game, you could change the trajectory, right? It works for that Fortnite kid from Kansas. Yeah, I, I just like Maybe everybody's buying into this idea of being an esports superstar? I don't know. I don't know how, like, ubiquitous that is. Maybe people don't care. But I think people might, because when I see people talk about the skill-based matchmaking, I see a lot of people saying, why would you not try? Why are you not sweating? You're supposed to try. And I'm like, do you not get... Like, I play May in, in Overwatch. I don't do shit. I love May. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. I'm I might be actively hurting the team, but that shit is funny to me and it's fun. You get what I'm saying? I love ice cubing on the point. Fuck yeah, ice cube on point, wall up. Wall down, ice cube on point. I'm wasting time. I can't play a game now if I'm not trying. Yeah, I wonder if we're conditioning people to think that way. I don't know, which is why I said, like, do people still do, like, this this silly car moment? Maybe they do. I'm out of touch, right? I don't have time to play in these servers. You know? That's why I'm, like, kind of asking chat. I If they do, then that's fine. It's just... I don't feel like the culture around games is as goofy anymore. Yeah, I think people bought into the esports infrastructure. And I get why, right? Who wouldn't want to make it a career? But I think with it becoming sort of more normalized, you know? Yeah! It's interesting. It's a combination of social media making the vocal minority louder, marketing pandering to comp play, and influencer with their darn influence ammo. That's kind of true. I think influencers have too much power over uh, game development. Maybe not. I don't know. There's that whole thing that games should like listen to the fans or whatever. I don't think that's true. I think there have been too many games that will will sort of cater to the whims of fans and then the game dies and then the fans move on. Fans are dumb. But, you know, that do- it doesn't mean they're not right, especially the most hardcore players. Sonic movie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah sometimes the fans are right, you know? I- Recent example, people still fucking around with multiplayer. It's just fucking TF2. (laughs) In TF2, these people, this is arrested development. These people will know in two months ago. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Come on. That's two for, yeah. (laughs) I, I normally don't care about DMCA, but this is a sponsorship. Oh, no, not the heavy. See, this is the skill-based matchmaking guy. You see all these guys are coming in, ruining the party. Then again, sometimes I'm that heavy. And when people taunt me in Elite Smash, or not Elite Smash, but when people, like, crouch or do something in Elite Smash or taunt, I kill them instantly. I'm not your fucking friend. So I kind of get it. I get it. I'm that guy, too. I'm not having fun with you. I'm not taunting. I'm not... I'm the tryhard. Yeah. It's not that I'm the tryhard. It's more that I, like... The person doing that on the other end is probably, like, a 19-year-old having fun. I'm 34. Get me the fuck out of here. Let me get my win. (laughs) You know what I mean? I'm trying to get my win and get the fuck out of here. I'm not trying to make friends. I always fear I've accidentally killed a friendly. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I'm like, I'm not trying to fucking... So I'm the problem. I'm cringe. I'm cringe, you know? I get it. I would see dance parties in Splatoon and let them do their thing. If I kill a guy three times in League, I'll just stop fighting them. Especially if I'm in Ur for like a silly game mode. I'll just like go around them. <laughs> I'll ignore them so they get to have fun. So I can I I'll I'll play a little silly too, but not in the real game, you know. <laughs> Look at this poor heavy. This heavy is malding. He's just seething. 
Do you still play League? I, I, I play Earth every once in a while. I can't stop. It's stupid. <laughs> oh, hell yeah! <laughs> Rip, bozo! <laughs> Red, let's go! <laughs> the whole team? The whole squad showing up? Why can they move while doing that? That's amazing! Bro, they fucking hated that guy. They hated that heavy, bro. <laughs> There's so many pyros. Oh. That's the good ending. <laughs> Wait, I saw the chat. Racism gone. Finally, peace. See this shit? I don't know why this is funny to me. When people do this in League, I think it's cringe. When they do it in TF2, I love it. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm poisoned. It's so stupid. I think TF2 is just so funny to me. TF2 exists in a time... For some reason... And I'm sure you guys feel this too. When I play a fighting game or some other game... I, I feel like the guy on the other end is just being an asshole. I feel like they're being a prick, and I take every single hit as uncharitably as possible. Same with, like, Melee, same as Smash, everything like that, you know? But in TF2, if a guy keeps killing me, I don't take it personally. I, I just think he's, like, it, it's funny, you know what I mean? Why is it that way in TF2? Everything is an insult. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mentally ill. I don't know why... I assume that people are being assholes in other games. I'm weird. Yes. The characters are silly. Yeah, but like Faust is silly. If Faust combos the hell out of me and then taunts, I'm mad. If Pyro airs blasts me off the map and then taunts, I'm like, that's silly. Right? Faust ain't all that silly in Strive. Uh, you know what I mean. Like, he's goofy, right? Ragdoll is funny. Oh, Ragdoll. Ragdoll might be the secret sauce. That's true. Maybe. What do you mean not silly in Strive? He gives characters an afro. <laughs> that sounds pretty silly to me. Yeah. It's because winning in a fighting game is you, a win in TF2 is a team effort. Maybe, actually. Maybe in the same way that in team games you could just blame your team. If I'm dicking around in a team game, it doesn't hurt as much. Because it's like, I don't... If if we deserve to win, my teams will carry... I don't know. I fucking love TF2. I wonder if we'll ever have a game like TF2 again. Sincerely. I don't care if I win or not in TF2. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think we'll ever have a game like this. And I wonder, you know, people who didn't grow up with this, like, they don't know what it was like. Crazy. Considering how Valve is of the number three. No, dude, I think even if you make Team Fortress 3, you will never catch this lightning in a bottle again. I really don't think so. But maybe this is Fortnite. I think this is Fortnite. I think Fortnite is the new one. And instead of having fun with the server, you're having fun with your, like, three friends. And you're driving around in a car, dicking around. I think Fortnite is that. Because cause when I play Fortnite with people, I'm, I'm, I'm trolling out of my mind. I'm doing ridiculous stuff. And then the fun becomes, like, how do I kill the guy with the fishing rod? Instead of, like, yeah, yeah, I think it's Fortnite. I think Fortnite's the answer. What about Minecraft? It's probably Minecraft. I had no experience with Minecraft. Only in Fortnite can Goku shoot Darth Vader and then hit the gritty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Fortnite is this generation's TF2. I think that's cool. That's a cool thing to do. You know? Among Us? No, I don't think so. Because Among Us is like... You can't... The way that you're expressive in Among Us is not within the game. It's... The limits of your own creativity. Among Us is the TF2 voice lobbies. <laughs> I've seen so funny, such funny shit in Battlefront 2. Is that the game with the boat? 
the boat that goes up the dude. I oh, I wish. Did they patch that out? That was so funny. That rules. Are those Battlefield? Oh, Battlefront is the Star Wars game. Got it. Okay. Man. I think TF2 is a cult classic and a mainstream widespread giant at the same time, and that's why it's like this. No, I think it's just... Uh, <laughs> first time chat said, finish the Halo video. It's like a minute longer. Rude? You drop the Prime, I'll finish it right now. Hand it over. <laughs> I'm having a talk with my paying customers. My little pay piglets. <laughs> We're having a discussion. One prime right now. I'll do it. Okay, my bad. All right, thank you, John. <laughs> I have a new favorite pay pig. I have a new favorite. Oh, my God. Thanks, John, for the prime. <laughs> Halo rules, dude. Not the game itself, but for this. I guess Overwatch tried to do that with, like, the May snowball game. You know what I mean? Stunlock broken. It only took $5. It's finished. I'll miss you. Wake me. When you need me. Oh, that's sad. Coney at the start, I don't have feelings about Halo. Well, I do now. I I do now, man. <laughs> That's so sad. Oh, my God. I wish I actually got to play this game. What, like old Halos? They were different. Yeah. I just, like, this image, I didn't get to show it much. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but basically, like... These are all different players. Like, this guy just wants to dick around and do fun stuff. This guy just wants to, like, turn off his brain... This guy wants to play for real and be mean and, and hardcore. And this guy's just a normal guy who's trying to spend, you know, an hour or two a night. And they all find their own servers. When I played uh, TF2, Mal and I played together. And we were actually uh, Toad and Toadette. And I would play Toad uh, soundboard clips over the, the team speak. <laughs> Who'd y'all main? I played uh, Spy. I play. I was the best spy on the server, and I would just like they, they. But my server knew me enough. You're the mic spammer. Yes, my server knew me enough to like only ask yes or no questions, because I used Nintendo 64 uh, Mario Kart 64 Toad sound effects. Hold on. I would only use this Toad voice. <laughs> And uh, they would know that they could only say yes, they could only ask yes or no. <laughs> because this is the only, the, I only had answers to yes or no questions, so it was very fun. Yeah! <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> but anyway, I would just dick around. Nobody took it seriously. Mallory was totally, it was very cute, you know? And I don't know where any of those people went. And I, they probably don't remember me because I don't remember any of them. But I was on that server for like nine months. And it was a lot of fun. Was Mal better than you? No. Mallory is awful. <laughs> She's not a gamer. Mallory is not a gamer. Nope. She, I bless her heart. She does her best. She played heavy. <laughs> she played heavy. She did that thing where, have you guys ever dated someone or been with someone who isn't a gamer, but like does, like, the fake gamer rage because they think you're supposed to get mad at the game. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, you guys don't know what I'm saying? There's, like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe this. No. There's, like, a stereotype of gamers. Do, do some of you know what I'm saying? Like, if you have a girlfriend that her only knowledge of video games is, like, gamer raging and like taking it seriously and being sweating and like they're they play heavy and they get backstabbed they're like oh fucking spy and it's like yeah there's a spy and uh you know what i mean 
It was like that kind of thing. You aren't crazy. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad it's not just me. She learned it from you. I, I, I raged once at TF2 ever. I was at a friend's house, and I kept dying to Pyro. It was my best friend's house. I kept dying to Pyro, and I, and I fucking slammed on my desk, and I remember him going, dude, relax. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget that. It's burned into my memory. It's burned into my fucking... To be fair, you deserve to... Oh, absolutely. I was being I was being annoying as hell. I'll never forget that. That's a great response. I've told this story before. I played League with uh, friends before. And I was being a whiny bitch because I was the best player on in my group. And uh, I was just getting annoyed because we were like on a five loss streak and I was just being a whiny bitch. And somebody that I knew pretty well, but not very well, like who like came in with the group and was playing support, I was just bitching at him. He's like, hey, dude, can you you sh can't fucking talk to me like that. Don't be an asshole. Like, y you shouldn't talk to anybody like that, but d definitely not me. And I was like, you're right. You're you're right. And I stopped doing it. That's, it's very, it was, he was right. And then I calmed down in that session, and I, I continued to be whiny in other ones. <laughs> Wake up call? I mean, it's not that. It's just like, you're like... I respect the opinions of my friends. You know what I mean? Having a skill gap in co-op games is enraging. <laughs> well, not always, though. I mean, like, you know, I, you, you know what you're signing up for when you play with friends. You know what I mean? I think it depends on how shitty the game is, how long it is, you know? Like Left 4 Dead or other games where you depend on scrubs. Eh, maybe. I think it's like... I think it's dependent on the environment, but I I would have doubled down. I, no, nah, I I I I genuinely like I respect the opinions of my friends a lot. Like I'm I'm you know my friends couldn't play shooters with me because the MMR difference would make it unplayable for them. That's why I fucking hate skill based matchmaking. My friend wanted to get into multiverses and I had to make a Smurf, and I just played Shaggy. Because he, he played for the first time, and I was, like, a top five Velma. And it was like we couldn't play because the matchmaking was, like, you know. But it's not a skill-based matchmaking issue because, like, you know, there's this whole conversation of, you know, should I play with noobs, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it was different. Do you respect our opinions? Yeah, because we're friends. You and me, chat. I love you all personally and individually. Each and every one of you. Remember, Prime is a free way to subscribe to the channel. It's below the stream. Absolutely free. Go ahead and click that button for me if you don't mind. Because we, cause we like each other, right? Huh? <laughs> Come on, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like this is, this is accurate, which... But I also feel like I'm old gamer boomer brained for believing in this. And maybe it's just like, I, I should, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just shut the fuck up, old man. <laughs> Get over it. It's simply true. I mean, it feels true to me, but I don't know. Maybe not. I'm out of touch. I don't play these games. I played Overwatch and I got yelled at for picking May. So, uh, and, and I play, went back to the game. And I tried to play Ash, and I was like, this is too hard. I'm going back to May. <laughs> I don't want to aim. I would play Winston. <laughs> uh, if I'm going to aim, I'll play Soldier. That's it. If I'm going to aim, I'm going to play Soldier, because he's so simple. Period. You know? Were you in Ranked? Uh, The first season of Overwatch, I played Ranked. I was like, Platinum, I think? I don't know. They took away Maze Freeze. I know. I played I played too. Yeah, she doesn't freeze anymore. Plat didn't exist in season one. No, it wasn't Plat. It was like I think I asked people what rank that was, because Mr. R was really the good, the Smash player, and I was like, what is this? And he said Plat. So I was like, oh, it's Plat. I don't remember what the number was. I think it was just a number. It was like Plat five or like low Plat. So I don't remember. 
What's the point of being an ice character then? I think they took out all hard CC that wasn't alt because it's annoying to not move. Something like that. Yeah, they, they didn't want hard CC, which, like, you know, I get, right? I think it's stupid, but only tanks get stuns now. Yeah, apparently it's bad. Like, the tank shit and, like, because all the tanks have all the power now because there's only one of them, but... I don't know. It's a different world. All the stuns were insufferable. Yeah, I heard people would just, like, lock them together and shit, but... I'm not an Overwatch guy. Well, fellas. I think it's time to call it. Hit the old dusty trail. I know. It's bedtime. Tomorrow is gameplay. I promise. Tomorrow is a gameplay stream. We play Puppet Combo. Sorry we didn't do it today. Okay. It's fine. Hbox is playing with his 21 pound. No Overwatch. Okay. We're talking about Overwatch. We're gonna go watch Void. By the way, no ads tonight. You're fucking welcome. Oh wait, no. This is copyrighted song and it's a sponsored broadcast. <laughs> Whoops. I forgot. Turn that shit off. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow, Puppet. I can't I even this play this clip because it's fucking. Oh my god, I can't do Three Stooges. How I can't I do the this. outro. Whatever. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>